from the feedback of the chat. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm here with uh, G2's uh, general manager, Roma. I'm excited to, to, to speak to you after your uh, consecutive uh, Winter Split Championship. Uh, first and foremost, Roma, uh, welcome to the show. Thank you for reaching out to me. I'm excited uh, to, to pick your brain about uh, what you guys are, are doing and what you've been up to. How do you feel so far? In, I mean, in regards excellent. to the <laughs> Wait, uh, Now I can see your face. Sorry, I couldn't. I couldn't before. Um, up, I'm going to put you here. Wait, speak to me. Hello, hello, hello. Perfect. Okay, so now I don't want to see my face. So up. I'm going to put some white stuff on top. Nice. Now I can see your smile. <laughs> hello, my good sir. Uh, I'm, hello, I'm doing great. I'm doing great. Uh, we just won, you know. Uh, it's 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 a great feeling. It makes my job um, so much easier. Um, I can start the logistic uh, for, for the next weeks. Yes, um, yes. I can feel all the paperwork for the Chinese vi the, the, the visa to China. Mm. Um, and we know we're going to go there. And from a manager perspective, that means a lot. Because if you're not pre-qualified, you still have to fill everything. Because Riot wants to make sure everyone's going to have their visa on time. And it's not a good feeling to read the paper if not. So no, I've, been there. <laughs> I've been there. I've been there. I've been there. Sure. You managed to top I, yourself I, even this split. Like every time I, I'm wondering what will Roma bring in terms of, let's say, your look. And today, uh, but on this day, you, you I wasn't inspired by Yellow the Dragon and the colors. I imagine the G2 colors. How will you top yourself well, the next time? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. The, the makeup body paint artist I work with is incredible. She's extremely gifted. Uh, we've done a, a, a big number of body paint already together. So now my brief to her are really minimum. You know, it was like, okay. we're going to China, maybe. I would like to have a dragon. Um, I want the name of the five guys. A G2 logo somewhere. Okay. What color is the dragon? Blue. Uh, okay, <laughs> and then I trust her, and she came with the props to fix and the whole stuff. So it took really cool. I'm happy, and we won, which makes every time you do a body paint, it's a bit of a gamble because uh, it takes like six, seven hours to do. Uh, oh shit! It, it takes time, you know. So I usually do it in the middle of the open space, and then that way, I can see the facility waking up, the first mm. boys coming, caps coming to play a cheeky solo queue really early, yeah, yeah. you know. Um, and and then everything builds up until we we go to the facility, which is usually uh, to, to the studio, sorry, which is usually the time where I'm done. Um, but if you win, then I can spend the whole evening with the body paint. If you lose, <laughs> usually you go home, and it takes an hour and a half shower. And this, this this hour and a half to remove all the paint. I, I still have some some green probably like somewhere <laughs> on, on, on my chest, uh, which doesn't go off. I don't know why. Um, but it's, it's if you lost, which happened to us in Malmo, I did the body paint and we lost. Uh, and, and it takes forever. You're like, fuck. I literally spend longer in the showers and the whole best of five. Yeah. sometimes three times more than the whole best of five you know so i <laughs> uh, should have done my job better uh, so i see i see but thank god it was a hotel shower at least i can imagine the shower is also uh, taking some I kind of leave money every time of course i oh, have to shit. leave a big bill uh, for the cleaning lady that, yeah, that's okay. not that's neat for them. i wanted to yeah. ask because this is very i guess specific question for you guys because you guys and it's such a unique position considering you are running back the roster. What does winning win to split actually mean for you guys? Was there an element of you guys almost taking it for granted yeah. that it will happen? Or is it just a subject yeah. of what the competition is and will be? It, it, um, it, it was everything because we had to prove to ourselves that we were good again together. And well, I mean, we, we, we know we're good, right? But we wanted to prove ourselves we are able to win every single game we're going to face because every single game matters. And at the end of the day, it, 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 yes, we're building this team to be able to beat Asian teams and, and get to Worlds, right? But if we're not able to win every single game on the way, and then it, it's all for nothing. And, and I'm so happy the European um, LEC is currently with so many new teams and super hyped, super hyped new teams and new players because it gave us, it gave us some good fights. Uh, and I'm happy we won at the end um, because that still means we're the best in Europe for now, for this bit. But also the team next to us are going to be good enough so we can all improve from it by, by fighting. And then Matt, for example, um, was way 
stronger Sundays than we thought they would be, and we were already considered, considering them good, despite maybe some people are checking the scrim list right now and saying, yeah, you, you beat them 6-0 uh, three days before. Yeah, but those were close games, and, and I think they were getting in our heads slowly, and when we lose this game one on Sunday... I had I had flashback from my own Vietnam, you know. I was like, fuck, <laughs> it's going to be NRG all over again. We destroy them in stream and we lose on stage. Fuck, like, we, we're going to fail, but you have to follow the process, right? We, we, we spend so much time discussing those, those between games moments, minute per minute, who's going to do what, how you're going to feel, what you're going to eat. Like, so you have just have to do your job, and the boys did an amazing job at resetting and analyzing what happened and saying, oh, there was this rough problem, there was this, there was this, let's go back to this plan, and, and then we won. But yeah, I was uh, yeah. Congrats to Mad. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm I'm happy to see Mad do do well. I think this is an element of overall that I miss. I understand why the franchising is uh, what it is, but there was an element of uh, like an ERL team getting the real shot. You know, in a way, it kind of reminds me of uh, like the splice or like the the vitality. I'm kind of clapping my own shoulder here, but. Uh, I, I, I can understand that that level of inspiration and committing to to a sense of identity because yeah. streaming against uh, uh, Mad Lions was very interesting because they showed us those fiddlesticks, the Varus top and the the, the unique uh, presence they had and their unique approach to the early game. And I'm 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 happy to see that same idea also show uh, itself on, on on stage because often you have this pl sometimes players say, oh, these guys won't do this on stage. And you always have to fight back against this, you know, because usually this is just uh, an excuse. So I'm, and then I'm, it happens. And then it happens, indeed. It's, uh, it's good to see some some new blood, of course. You know, on, on, on your end, you know, I thought in general, you guys had a pretty successful last year. It's, it's very brutal in the sense that um, when you play international competition, it's like how you perform on the day is going to impact the image and impact, uh, of course, the whole year. And as you mentioned, with your win to split final, ma managing to bounce back after that one loss that looked uh, pretty pretty grim, so to speak. And like they had a very good preparation with the Zach and the Asso, right? But yeah. managing to bounce back and looking back at the previous year, I thought as a whole, you guys were mostly very, very dominant throughout the year. And it was a very successful year. How did you guys recover as a group? How was the, let's say, uh, assessment of, of the World Championship? Um, it, was, it, was, it was traumatic um, to be eliminated like that. Um, like the, the, I will remember for a while this Saturday where we, we felt the day, from my perspective at least, I felt the day was a bit shaky from the beginning because we've had some people feeling sick and 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 in the meta we were not lost but we had some some instantaneities for sure um and then and then we get two by NRG and they played out of their mind and and we played i think bad to decent uh and and in in our ego because of of scream results and and some of our picks we thought we thought we we were supposed to win there, <laughs> and because of the narratives of Goff Online, everyone was pushing us. So we were like, okay, let's go. And then, oh, you fail, and then you realize that was not just just a normal game. You just lost in Worlds at Worlds. You lost to NA, and you cannot lose lose to NA if you're a European team. That's important. You can lose to anyone else, like any any Korean, Chinese, Japanese, Australian, Australian maybe not, but <laughs> not to NA. That counts double, and and then. That that means next step we have to face and an one of the Chinese team now. So that was maybe our easiest opponent from the two we were about to face. So wow! And and you on the Saturday of this evening of this loss and and you can't even assess really what happened because you have to play it's the next game. You have to play tomorrow BLG and and then we go there. Um, so I, I remember when we discussed we said okay we. If we lose, we cry tomorrow. If not, we pack our suitcase for for Busan. So okay, let's let's now focus on the plan. We don't have time to be scared. Uh, we went. We lost to BLG, um, and then at the end of the year, that that's this this shitty emotional end of the year meeting, uh, which is is which happens to 99% of the team in League of Legends. <laughs> to be fair, only one wins at the end of the year, um, and this meeting was was really emotional. Everyone spoke one by one. Everyone 
we went tried uh and and we we went back home and and pretty quickly and we knew already we wanted to keep everyone because i i don't believe it's possible to upgrade any of our player um if you want to cherry nitty pick on one specific set of data yeah maybe other player in the european ecosystem play one champion one person better than one of the player but it doesn't it doesn't it's not good enough to replace them uh, we have the best guys so to for this mission let's win worlds we have the five best commando so i've been playing hell divers a lot <laughs> for the last days <laughs> it's a super good game so you create your commando and you go um so that's why the off season was was pretty short uh we we're not going to change anyone, uh, which banks from a manager perspective. Right? I don't have to do all the firing, trading, buying and stuff. Um, but then how do we make sure we're going to be focused? Because we're still a bit trauma, you know? So we 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 first decided to not touch the staff. And then Mickey challenged it a bit and said, like, we should we should really consider Duffman. Uh, I'm, I'm putting my life on it. We need Duff if we want to win worlds. And 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 we all discussed with 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 Duff, and we realized, yeah, yeah, Mickey's right. <laughs> Let's do that. So uh, then then Duff came on board, and we did we did the classic um, workshop for like four five days. The stuff we discussed last time uh, together, which I think is so key in the preparation of a new team. The challenge there was. Five of those guys have been here already. So a lot of it would be a just redo. Um, so we used Duff as a way for everyone to introduce ourselves and introduce all the processes and stuff. And it was interesting to see how much of the players would 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 have remembered from the year and what process they liked and stuff. So it was a really, really good workshop week. Um, I think, yeah, we, 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 we mapped a bit the whole year. Um, but weirdly enough, the goal was not anymore to win worlds it was just to win every single game ahead of us because winning worlds was already the topic from last year uh, that's what we wanted to do right we were ready to pay everything but then because we did it once together and we failed now we're going to focus on the step by step because the consistency of a team that should should allow you to win worlds at the end um and then and then you go on the year and then that's why we worked a lot i th i think we took five days off for the whole winter uh, but consciously, you know, uh, it's not it's not a prison. Like, and no one has about work. It's like we all decided we're gonna work a lot because we need this, this this ticket to the international tournament. And the moment we have it, we can play those international tournament. We can get our revenge versus NA, Korea, China, and whoever's gonna face gonna stand between us and the trophy. You know, so that was our ticket. That's uh, ooh, okay. We still got it. Let's go. Well, there's there's many different uh, avenues that uh, we can we can go down by. I, I guess I want to start off on the first thing. Like you mentioned that because uh, because I'm, I'm I'm very curious to to find out more about your process in regards to you said mentioned the off seasons is is very very fast. Uh, you guys were locked into the five players. How much of a conversation does that involve the players, the staff? How how does your process in the off season work as as the general manager of G two? Mm. I, I I have week how to how to phrase that properly. Um, I have meeting every month, uh, like three four months with a higher management. Uh, so I have a N plus one, and then I report to the CEO as well, Alban. So Julie Alban on top of me, mm -hmm. uh, and they need to keep an overall vision on the team and and the changes on the long term, on the short term, and stuff. So so just to evaluate where we are at the moment, uh, and the recommendation where I was already for a few months before that. I think we need to keep everyone because uh, this roster is need, need, is doing an incredible job. Everyone is bounding around the same mission, so we 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 have to keep the crew and and let's see how things will evolve, the world and stuff like that. And despite us losing there, everyone committed so much to the project and and understood the goal and the meaning of it that yeah, it kind of made sense um, to to just keep everyone. So once it was approved, shared it with the players. Everyone was was okay to stay because that could have been an issue as well, right? We decide, hey, we want to keep everyone, and then three people decide, nah, I don't believe in it anymore. Mm -hmm. So that was a, that was a pretty good um, feedback to get from 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 everyone on the project. Um, and then yeah, we 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 restarting and we we ten this time. So and you can that's why also we needed to win so bad because if we don't if 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 we don't lift this trophy, 
oh man, uh, what are we going to do? We paid everything again and it doesn't happen. Um, then consequences and we need to change more stuff. So now at least we know, okay, it's still working. Um, we can we can accelerate uh, faster. Um, Would it uh, be the same in a world where, obviously you guys are by far the strongest team in, in, in Europe. Um, would it be the same in a world where the competition would be insanely high and someone would beat you fair and square? Would it still feel the same way? Um, I, I hope. Uh, I I, I want to be beaten a bit more. Um, mm. It's good. That's how we learn, you know. You never learn as much as... So last year, the moment we learned the most was MSI Scrims. It was incredible. They were so good. The way they played, the way they moved, we learned so much. Like like it's it's you you're discovering some new, not some new, but you need to understand how they're playing so you can mimic and and do better. Um, but we learned so much there. Um, our worlds we were a bit more lost. Uh, we still learned a lot. So we need to be able to practice versus those, those Asian teams to understand how they play the game if we want to be able to beat them. And and that's why going to international event it's a bit of a snowball, right? The more you go there the better you train your player and the better you train your player, the more they should win at home. But that said, at the end of the day, it's a tournament. Mm. What if what if we do not recover after game one on Sunday and Matt takes another one and then we are O2 and, and doubt start to creep into your head and yeah, are you going to win the next one? No, can happen, you lose. And then suddenly, suddenly it's a historical moment with this incredibly UL-like team winning like... I, I cheered for them. That's what you, you were saying about the comparison with Old Splice and Old Vitality. And I agree. I'm so happy to see them. I wanted to see more of their coach Merzet, you know. He already had an interesting off-season last year because he was already remote to go into some teams. And it didn't happen because he had really strong opinion on what roster he wanted and his processes. And back then, I remember thinking, it's brave of a coach to refuse some jobs because he cannot implement his his own vision of it, you know, and, and because maybe you don't get other offers, LEC, LEC offers. He did, he got one and now he's proving. So it's Melze to Guru. I don't know. <laughs> but no, the way he drafted the game one, that was good. This, the the Zakon 4 was, was, was beautiful indeed. Uh, Oriana Prio and uh, I, I liked it a lot. Is um, No, they have their own flair. I think it definitely um, makes the competition a, a lot spicier. And I think they inspire uh, a certain level of um, vision that n you you just know these guys are gonna get better. And that's that's my yep. overall impression because I think that a lot of the things that they are um, good at are uh, tough to master. I think in terms of how they play early game and yep. their level of confidence uh, in their approach in the game. I think these are things that are really tough to nail down. There's a sense of commitment to to their identity, and I think. Most of the time, this is what uh, teams face uh, as a challenge most of the time. I, I agree. Um, I, I wanted to elaborate because in, in, in the previous one, I mentioned that uh, there was a lot of paths that I felt that we could go down. Like you mentioned the addition of Duffman, Mickey uh, pushed for it. Uh, from an outside, I have judged that G2, especially in winter, uh, you guys have had uh, a much let's say, consistent way of winning games. I would say that, um, you know, the hallmark of a very strong team is a team that you need to beat multiple times within the same game. Uh, I think there was a lot of moments where you guys have uh, found a lot of value in mid game and late game that have constantly uh, challenged the enemy team to, to, to make the right decision. And you guys have been very, very quick to pounce. I remember last winter, it was very, almost always around Mickey and Hans playing very brutal bot lanes, exploding Ooh. leads, Yike invading, and uh, you guys just winning because you snowballed very, very quickly, very, very fast. I also saw that, uh, you know, there was the, the, the thing that BB mentioned, that he focused on his lane phase with Alfari, which was a big point yeah. of criticism. That is something definitely he, he leveled up. I think it was the most evident in, in the BO5. I think that there's a, a, a lot more diversity in what Hans Sama likes to play. And also, I would say that Yaik is a lot more consistent. And then Caps has found form already, which is always a dangerous thing. I, I, though always I tell myself, it's like, either you have to have the performance of a lifetime to beat Caps, or you have to hope that he just uh, is, is, is out of form. And, and all of this, of course, is from an outside perspective. But you mentioned that Mickey pushed uh, for, uh, for the... Uh, inclusion of, of, of Duffman, 
how has his uh, role uh, been in the team and how has he improved your already uh, very successful process i would say um it's a blessing um the the same way we've had isma coming to the team in 2023 and it gave us a lot of new new processes and new concepts and stuff and we were like fuck we we were definitely not optimal in 2022 <laughs> oh my god and and the same now with Duff coming like it already feels like wow we were so not optimal in 2023 um and and because he's is so knowledgeable which is not everything because a lot of people it's, it's like being a teacher you know like uh, if, if you want to be a history teacher and you know everything about history but you're not able to communicate about it you're not a history teacher you're a history wizard if you want to but and you if you want to be a teacher you need the ability to to speak to to make things simple to to create all those brain processes so everyone gets super easily to the point yes, and yes. Duff can do that Duff, he can he can do that and he can he can really break the game down to some really easy stuff and then he turns it into a game and the boy the boys love to to dive into it and and they remember it and more and more and I feel like they're growing fast because I, I play LOL, right? I understand. And then most of the time when, when, when Duff speaks with him at the beginning, I understood everything. All the switch, TP, push, wave, blah, blah. Um, it's been four weeks in. I start to feel like I don't understand every topics, you know, like some zips. They're starting to dive a bit too much and they talk about details so small and say, okay, it's good. They're doing a great job. Uh, and I think you, we can see it on stage as well as you were saying the way we play the mid and, and late game is much much better uh, which allows us also to get back on our feet when the early game doesn't go as good um yeah and everyone can carry all the boys are having a great split it bangs and 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 the work with Alpari with Bibi I think he's a really really good teacher as well and and Bibi respects him he respects Bibi so it was really really good relationship I think um and it worked well so yeah I'm I'm just proud of them. They worked a lot. They played a lot of solo queues. They let a lot. They did everything, you know. They watched the VOD. Like everyone was really on a mission. Um, same as last year, but we needed we needed an extra trophy slash ticket to international to prove ourselves we are on the right path. The grind is worth it at the end of the day. Mm. It was it was actually an example that I used against uh, not used against but used to 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 motivate my players is. Caps is considered the goat of the region, and he is the one who has played the most amount of solo queue. I remember in the preseason that I saw him in every uh, Champions Queue game, and he was playing Akali. I remember he had maybe 200 games of Akali played before the season started, and it showed. It showed so evidently. And uh, to do that, mm. when you are considered the best and you're moving into a situation where, um, you know, you have an opportunity to be lured into taking it easy, I think, um, is uh, a source of inspiration. But I saw that you had a reaction, so what did you want to add? <laughs> um, I think that's one of the off season where Caps played the least amount of League of Legends oh. for him, okay. funnily enough. But you're correct. He was in most of the uh, Scream um, in-house and stuff like that. Um, one of the biggest challenge every team had to face, which is now I believe a bit overlooked, is how to transition to the new map and how to get ready and how to collect data in December. Because it was an absolute nightmare for teams yes. <laughs> and you will remember it really well, you were in the middle of it. So we could not use any of our external tools from proprietary website to external website to nothing. That means suddenly you're back in League of Legends 2015 where you don't really have any, any forum or stuff for data. So it's all based on opinion. We even internally called it, oh, my, my uncle said. So one day one player <laughs> would come and say, yeah, oh, guys, did you see uh, Plus the new Heimerdinger if he does that? Oh, my God, the new brand top is absolutely insane. How can you back that with data? Do you have, yeah, I don't know, someone said. The someone said was so strong that I think it made our job really hard to work. And that meant every time you were playing solo queue, you were playing the old map. Every time you're playing Scream, you're playing the new map. So if you spam solo queue, you're detraining yourself where you need to be there collecting data and stuff. And I think that was really interesting. And for Caps, who plays the game so much, usually he couldn't spam as much solo queue as he wanted if he wanted to be efficiently ready for 2024. So that's why those in-house were so important. Um, and the first two weeks of the tournament, you remember, you were there 
from a data perspective, every new day, if someone has a new idea, you know? So how do you practice with that? Like, should you go aggressive jungler, tank jungler, aggressive me, tank me, aggressive, everything was going everywhere. Old school, I would say. Yes, um, yes. No, I, I had fun. I, I, I love that uh, level of exploration, but we, we had the same battle with, uh, like our data analysts couldn't utilize the data that was available. Uh, we tried to make the, the champion queue lobbies uh, into names that yeah. could be gathered, but it was, it was something that failed and the whole server was also quite messy. There were times where it just didn't work and uh, we couldn't play on it. Uh, the, the one thing that stood out to me was because I always saw caps in Champions Q playing Akali and then in the scrim set that we also played during December also. He played, I believe, um, five games of Akali straight until he decided to to slam uh, Oriana with, uh, with with the Nocturne, I'm sure. Now the statute of limitation for the scrim has, has passed. Everyone knows Caps is good at the Kali, so this is why it stood out it's to fine. me. You know? <laughs> it's fine. Caps, Akali, you're not licking your pick, that's for sure. <laughs> no, for sure. Now, as your staff has expanded, um, you know, a, a challenge of mine and something that I wanted to improve coming into spring was, of course, how I create accountability for, for everyone involved as, as, as the head coach of the team, uh, the staff, uh, having visibility in what everyone does and aligning uh, was something that we actively worked on was the main point of improvement that I wanted to move into spring in terms of how you guys work together, how do you make sure that you're on the same page and how do you distribute uh, responsibilities and how do you give each other, let's say, uh, titles and, and, and creating that same level of visibility for the players? Um, ah, I love this question. Um, cause that, I think that's the core of the team. Um, we all have a really precise, defined, understood mission, which starts once again with the workshop you do at the beginning of the year. And everyone knows what they have to do, and the rest knows what they have to do as well. Um, that's why adding an extra staff is always really scary for me, because I believe anyone, anyone entering the ecosystem of a team is going to have an impact on it, even, even if they don't talk. If you're, if you're having a full day of scream and someone external comes and spends the whole day with you, I low-key need to veto this person in my head to make sure it's not going to bring negative energy to the team or bias the, 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 the training in any way. Mm. Um, to, just to, to protect that, that. That's my job, for example, as a GM. I'm here to protect everyone and make sure they can do their job efficiently without external trouble. And everyone, and everyone knows that's my job and they can interact with me about it. Um, and then Dylan is in charge of overseeing the whole training pool and the training, in-game training. So that means draft, uh, what champion should we pick more than others and stuff like that. Rodrigo will gather all the data. He has, he has all the technology for it and he, he would be the one you would discuss with to know what champion are the strongest from a pure data perspective. You can have your opinion, of course, as a player because you take it from solo queue and stuff and then you challenge it with data and we see and, and he would do all the patch stuff and, and the preparation going into games and, and all the early levels and stuff. So he works with uh, someone on remote called Click, which helps him to break all this data. Uh, but if you see some data, Rodrigo. If you see some drafting stuff and, and long-term strategy, Dylan. And, and so where do I put Duff in this? Um, so Duff came in in the brain pool of, of, uh, of, of our staff to be the specialized kind of, of mid, VOD, end game, and everything touching specific moment in game. Um, it's not like he cares that much about draft. He has opinion, of course, but I think his real love is playing this strategy game and understanding in this situation, this happens. So he watches, he, he collects always a lot of data and then he's going to feedback the boys and he shows them examples and stuff. So he's really, really well organized. Um, so that, that's a really good addition to our, our um, in-game staff pool. And then I have Isma working with me to make sure everyone survives. The food, how do you sleep? Uh, and how can you talk to one another? What, what from, a, from a mental perspective, how are you feeling today? How are you going to handle stress? How are you going to handle other stuff? And now that I have this, this commando of 10 people, we spend as much time as possible together. So that's why we live right next to the gaming house. That's why I live there and Duff as well and uh, Rodrigo as well. And Dylan spent all the time he can with us. Um, talk to everyone. Yeah. Um, so everyone being there and Isma, sorry, Isma yeah, travels a bit longer. But mm, the idea is we're always together because 
you know how intense the day of screams are. Mm. Things can go south really fast. If you have a all zero six day, suddenly the team can be in mess and everyone hates one another and you don't know what happened and stuff. So that's why I need the staff to be on site as much as possible so we can respond, respond and understand and, and debrief. And the one the one we have in the middle of the day between the, the two screen blocks are key for that. So between both blocks, the five players are going to talk to the five staff member. We still and, haven't and added the same. <laughs> But I please continue. It, <laughs> it's good. I, I think it's really good because, especially now that we're five, because everyone's going to talk about something different. You have to talk to me or to Dylan or to Rodri or to Isma. That's those are going to be different kind of talks. And then it allows, it allows everyone to have some safe space so they can discuss. Then we have the end of the day meeting, which sometimes reflects those one on one to understand. We need to identify the not not even orange flag not even yellow flag the the baby green flag so we can discuss them as a team so they don't scale and it's not because you're winning that you should not do it you should do it even more if you're winning because then you have to address your cockiness and you have to understand how you won you have to understand what peak worked was it good communication was it so you have to make sure every single scrim in his little block is pushed to the maximum so you can learn from it it's sometimes hard if you're tuesday game game six, you know it can be hard uh, so Yeah, so that's how we would work. And then we, we have a lot of staff meeting and I speak with them all the time. So it's a lot of communication, but not improvised communication. We, we create those blocks in the day and everyone agrees with them. We discuss them during the workshop. So when, when do you guys think it's the most efficient to talk about those stuff? And then we see how we can move the schedules block and we do it. I see, I see. Well, I would have all the points like... Like we've always talked about work-life balance, but in, in esports, if you're playing in a field that we are competing at the highest level, I think your work has to become your life, right? It's like we were in the office exactly. from, from 10 mm -hmm. till 1 yeah. and then we just go home to, to sleep and uh, there's always more, more to be done and there's always more to do and uh, yeah. it's just uh, a part of the commitment, right? It's like uh, it's hard to go to bed right knowing that there's people out there that might be working harder than you. <laughs> it's, uh, it's a very difficult yeah. thing. And of course, thing. it's hard. And, and, and the tournament is long. I mean, it's even shortened nowadays for the last two years, you know, but it used to be those eight, eight weeks in a row. And it, it's exhausting. And it's really important to pay attention not to burn out, um, especially because your daily life is so connected to a hard win or a hard loss. You know, every week you have to go somewhere and then they're going to tell you you're good, you're bad. And that can sometimes happen three times a week. And three times in a row, if you get your bed, you have five days to fix it. Imagine in, your, in, in, in a job a bit more chill. Yeah, it, it can create a lot of pressure. And after three weeks bad like this, when you're eliminated, you feel like shit. And you're, having, you're still having a really cool job, you know? So sometimes when you try to explain it to people, they get, yeah, but shut up, bro. You're in eSports. It's so cool what you're doing. I lost. I'm bad. I suck. Uh, I'm, I don't know if that's the path for me to do. I don't know if I should, should not change my job and stuff like that and a lot of teams are, have to go through that because they just lost that could have been us so i've been i've been in in those shoes so that's why i'm i'm so thankful for us winning right now because that could be our last win ever mm. you never know right you, you, you never know what's going to happen you have to be really grateful from what's happening here even of course we're dreaming of msi and stuff but what if matt comes back and they don't lose a single game they could they won't fire I wish that to them, not to get us, but so, so all that to say, you get the idea. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a lot of work, of course. So the work-life balance, that's why you also have to be careful how you spend your time off. What are you going to do? Are you going to save energy? What do you like to do there? That's one of the discussion we have with the players. What are they doing on day off? Like to make sure when we come back on the Wednesday, everyone is happy, you know? Mm. And not someone just went full day gen going to bed 5 a.m. two days in a row. And of course, on Wednesday... Is a zombie is useless. But then it's his day burned, it's our day burned, it's a staff day burned, and most probably it's the other team's day burned. You just burned nine people's job because you couldn't stop yourself from playing two more solo queue yesterday when you know you need seven hours of sleep. So, yeah. As, as uh, during the split, I didn't call uh, the rest day off day, I called it preparation day just to frame it in, in, in a different sense. Because off day, People associated with eating burgers and staying up late, you know, <laughs> it became... I, I said that to Isma, he's going to love it. Preparation day. It, it became a very dangerous thing because always the first day of scrims was always like, oh, I can see everyone's not uh, not quite the same, you know. It's um, make, making uh, the right decisions for the competition all along the way is 
uh, how I interpret it. Like it, it's not really a work-life balance. It's more about like making the right decisions so you can always uh, perform. I, I wanted to ask you on the topic of burnout because it's, it's an interesting topic. In, in, in my mind, I feel like the number one way to prevent burnout is to really, really make sure that everything that you, that the effort you pin, uh, put in actually feels rewarding and, and fruitful and that each individual uh, feels important. I, I think most of the time, I think people associate the idea of burnout with working too much. I think often in my mind, the times where I've personally been burnt out and when I've seen players be burnt out is when the process doesn't feel rewarding. And it's not from a lack of people putting in effort. It's more about the effort not yielding the fruit that you wish for, right? Um, in, in, in your sense, uh, you guys, uh, I imagine you guys are putting insane amount of hours. How do you, uh, together with Isma, of course, and the rest of the staff, how do you guys wow. pay attention uh, to the details of, of what burnout and how do you interpret the idea of burnout? Uh, aligned with you on this one, uh, burnout, more than a huge amount of work you're doing, is the feeling of losing purpose in your work and not getting any more recognition from, from the job itself or from outside of it. It's like, it's like biking when you're on the smaller speed and you're trying to go really fast. So you're like, hey, but then you look, look outside and you're not going anywhere. Uh, so that, that's <laughs> me a bit of a burnout. And that's the moment you say, fuck, fuck it, I, I stop biking. Um, but, and, and yeah. So in, for us, it's important to just feel, listen to understand what would be too much for you to understand once again, how you structure your day and the reward we're getting. Um, that's why Isma, having someone like Isma who can speak to the guys really and is professional at those situation helps a lot. Um, and we've also been winning a lot. Uh, so it helps uh, for sure. Uh, I think what's really important is once again, so it's preparation day. How do you reconnect to real life and, and rest and recover energy so you can give again this motivation? Um, yeah, it's it's... I think it's always a fascinating so it's the work, the work life, real life, because we work all the time. Uh, but it's a cool job, but it can be a really unforgiving job the moment you lose. Um, so that's why it makes it so cool when you're winning. I guess. That's, it's such a, um, such a dangerous game, too, because you make a commitment to five players and you kind of take the responsibility of their full being in that sense that uh, all the problems they might face, uh, regardless of what they might be in, 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 in life, it's like you make a commitment to five players. No team is really preparing themselves to make substitutions. Right? It's like uh, the, the, the intention is you make a commitment to five players, you work with them the entire year and, 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 and uh, life is, is fragile. In, in, in many ways, right? It's like you mentioned illness, you know, sometimes a team can be sick and you have to deal with yeah. it, right? It's like sometimes, uh, like I was hit by a car on uh, one point when I was on my way to scrims, you know, shit, shit, shit happens and, and you have to kind of uh, deal with it. And I feel like that is always the, the, the toughest part of the challenge that you have to deal, prepare yourself and become resilient enough for any uh, issue that you might face, right? And it's, it's so interesting to see that uh, kind of manifest itself at the World Championship where people say, oh, this team looks like a favorite and they're going to do well. And then they bomb out of groups or a team that has to go through hardships in order to move all the way like DRX in order to uh, succeed. Is, uh, I think that's the, the, the beauty of the competition, right? And what makes it feel uh, extra rewarding uh, in the end. Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. Um, I, I wanted to ask because I mentioned uh, my challenges of, of, of this previous split. It's like you, you, you made it very clear what the roles of each, each person is. In terms of the day to day, how you guys manage it, obviously you have scrims, you have the meetings. Uh, I'm, I'm curious in terms of how the reviews work. Uh, in terms of uh, are you more focused on the individual side? Or is it a group session? How do you guys run the reviews and how, let's say, do you piece it together in terms of prioritizing uh, what is important since everyone in the group has a different skill set? Um, I'm, I'm curious to get your answer after. Um, <laughs> the, so the way we do the review is the moment the game is done, everyone needs to be in the room 
instantly if we just lost. Um, because I hate those moments where you have only a few people coming back in the room and then everyone has to wait because someone decided to go to the toilet and those five to ten seconds are just toxic as fuck. So uh, I would rather not have them. So if we just lost, everyone in the room. If we won, you have time to stop toilet um, because the mood is going to be a bit happier and people can discuss. Uh, and then it's either Dylan or Duffman who watch the game uh, and then they're going to decide what moment they want they want to address. Uh, so that would be the in-game part. And once we are done with the in-game part, we're going to discuss the um, the draft part. How was the draft? Did you like it? What could be changed? What could be adapted? Of course, sometimes both get mixed. Uh, but that's, that's a bit the idea. Uh, so we don't watch all the game. We only watch the moment we can, we believe, learn from. Um, and then we go into the prep for the game after, uh, which is also really important to, okay, this game is done. We learned or we didn't. Uh, we tried stuff and it failed. Uh, we won, we lost. Uh, there's a lot of uh, parameters. And then you have to draw a line, you switch side, and well, if we are red, now we have to prep for the next game. And so people stay in the room and we talk the pick we want, if people want to try stuff. So this delimitation, we found ways to mark it even more in 2024. It didn't exist that hard in 2023, but spending a lot of time to prep the game, we believe help for sure um, to, to, to dive into the next one and see what learnings you can capitalize on or not. Hmm. Okay, that's interesting. I, I guess that's something that uh, must have helped a lot, right? Coming into that loss that you guys face against Mad Lions, getting in the process of, of bouncing back and focusing on tangible things that can apply into the next game. Uh, should be something that is very fruitful as you play the the best of series. Um, yeah, you guys take care and, and, and no the the cut the ability to say okay next game now mm. is I think yeah good tool. So you guys don't uh, take breaks. It's um, it's rock and roll action all the way through in in the screen um, block. Usually we are a bit quicker than other teams to review. Um, and we can take one minute, like then people can go to toilet if they wanted to go to toilet first. Um, that be that be the moment. Uh, if we when we were working with Alfari, uh, he would he would uh, use a small one on one with BB. Uh, that's the moment Botlane can review uh, the early game. Uh, Caps can check some new crazy picks. Um, uh, Yike can see the passing from the enemy jungler and his passing to review it a bit more. Uh, but those moments are harder to control in terms of time box so mm -hmm. it's easier to do the together time box first and then and then people can do the different stuff uh and get ready for the next game um how are I you see. guys doing no on, on on our end i think um we we had this challenge where uh, it's like we, we we had a couple of smokers on the team right and there was uh, oh so you need to add a, a smoking block at one so point there was um a bit of a challenge there in terms of piecing it together and the, the 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 main thing that we reached as a conclusion was that uh, the best thing for us uh, to function was to to take a five minute break and at at, at for start uh, for starters that five minute break is like the intention for me was as long as we focus it's like I wanted to use the time in between the games to make sure that the performance of the next game is as good as possible. If there's decisions that we can make that will make us perform better, then I'm happy to cover any reviews or discuss any aspect of the game after the scrims. It's like I reserve the right to keep oh. the boys after scrims to review things that maybe we didn't cover, whether it was individually or in the group. So basically, my idea was I want to make sure between the games we take the decisions that will make us perform as good as possible. But in that, you know, when you try to piece together the schedule, it's like, okay, we have we have 20 minutes between games. We're going to separate five to this, 10 to this, five to this. Always, you know, in between, I would have to chase the players. I would have to run around. I would always lose a little bit of time. And it would become a little bit frustrating, you know. So, so the ideal, we were striving for it, but there were moments where we lost time that kind of added up. And this became a little bit of a point of, of frustration. I think in regards to how we did the reviews, I think in terms of managing the group, most of the time I would pre pre present points uh, to the group that um, uh, basically we could attribute to the whole group in terms of, oh, this is how we, we need to align on this. How do we want to approach this fight? You guys need to, I wanted to push for a discussion. And uh, then the remainder of the time would be used for 
basically individual feedback because we had um, like the way we structured the team was that we have uh, basically four, including me, then strategic coaches. So we could separate ourselves to individuals because we noticed that the guys would uh, respond a bit better to the individual feedback. But sometimes in striving for that, we would miss and lose a lot of time in the in the transition of it you know i would have to always bring people back we are starting we are starting we're starting this this is the next step we're starting here and uh, there was there was more that we could fine tune there and more uh, in a way where i could push the other coaches to be utilized more because i noticed that um, if they didn't necessarily take initiative on things i would just do it myself and uh I think that uh, I need to do a much better job of actually delegating and actually pursuing and actually holding my staff accountable. Because for me, the most natural thing for the longest time has been, if no one does that, I'm just going to do it, you know? And, uh, and it's just how I've managed for, for, for many, many years. But as things become more complex and everything becomes, uh, let's say, yeah, complex is the right word, where people need to be specialized, right? As mentioned, like Duffman is very, very curious yeah. about specific aspect of the game. I think this is uh, super, super important, you know, that you have that freedom. And when you're actually studying the game, you know what you're looking for, because there's a big difference between watching a game and studying a game, right? If you don't know what you are looking for, you're just watching the game and things are just happening in front of your eyes. And you can ask a player, what did you get from this game that you just watched, that you just pressed forward on the screen? They would say, yeah, I don't know. It was just a game. It's like, yeah, this yeah, team is good. Being <laughs> conscious about what's happening. Yes, yeah. yes. And uh, basically, it's like the whole idea was, what can we do between the scrims to make us prepared for the next scrim? Like, that was the whole, uh, like, idea. And then, at the end of the day, I always reserved uh, one hour time, if necessary, where the coaches would sit down with players or we would do have, let's say, uh, focus groups with uh, with two or three people where there were certain uh, concepts that we needed to cover and, and and this is how how we kind of worked what do you think <laughs> um it it seems you you spend a lot of time running after players <laughs> yes. um it's it's i i don't know how we deal with the smoking stuff it's for sure annoying uh because that means people are going to leave and it makes our team time less efficient so i guess when people at least moving the smoking stuff to the end of the review, because I really believe discussing the, the emotions right after the game is important, um, even if they're not really productive, because <laughs> then people are going to have super biased opinion on specific part of the game, uh, which of course could be, yeah, we started the game with a 5 versus 5 in the river, so of course this game is not real data, right? Mm. Uh, but I think have, having, having that directly. Um, but the, the, the truth is our training tools, look, it's the worst. We we yes, yes. we're literally practicing football, forced to play two full games per day versus an enemy team. Like so, that 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 makes it something so specialized in its own way that I don't know if anyone has the best training method yet. And 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 I I would love to spend one week in a gaming house of a top team in Korea or China to understand how they're operating. The first barrier there would be the language, of course, and all this is all this the little details you can you can commit and, and transmit with that. But I, I would love to see how they do, uh, how many blocks they do, how how do they, how do you efficiently use those blocks between screams to gather and learn info, and how do you make sure everyone is aligned and stuff? Because um, I I would assume every team is going to have a different process with mm. ten team in Europe, ten different process, ten ways to do. With different amounts of staff as well. I had a great talk with with Mac last time, and he was explaining me a bit how they used to do stuff at at Mad, with a, a lot more people. But then he created those little block times so everyone could review in the different stuff. And yeah, it worked. They were a good team, you know. Um, so I'm I'm and I believe any process doesn't resist its player if they refuse it. At the end of the day, mm. you can have the best processes in the world or believe that's the best way to squeeze knowledge from the scrim day. If it doesn't work with your players, that doesn't work, and no one's going to learn, and and they're going to become toxic to the process, and and you're going to fail as as a team, because you as as staff couldn't identify the the, the special, and the special because they have this specific skill set. So, but it's hard. So that's also why I'm so happy I still have the five same players, 
because they agree with a lot of the process, you know. Mm. So it works because we can be a team going to the same direction. Um, because if it doesn't, yeah, then then, yeah. No, I I I'm very happy to see when like a a staff is retained, a roster is retained because even though I understand why it is the way it is, one year time doesn't necessarily give you, like, let's say if you're on the right path towards improvement, there's certain cases where definitely changes need to happen because the dynamic has maybe yeah. wounds that are too, too deep. Right. And, uh, people put them, put each other in type of boxes and they are not as hopeful about uh, each other's improvement and each other's impact. There's definitely cases where that is true, but I think there's also cases where uh, letting things run a little bit longer can be uh, very fruitful. So I'm happy that you guys stuck together and you made the, this, this, this commitment. I think it's, 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 it's very good. I think well, what, what I wanted to add, I kind of lost my train of thought. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll, I'll find it. Uh, maybe I'll find it uh, later. Yeah, it is to to be the lawyer's advocate, uh, the, the devil's advocate on this one. You also need to change stuff, and it's always when things are not working, you have to change. And and I think this new format, new, it's been two years, right? But it's so unforgiving for that. And mm. you're in first first row to 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 have experienced it. Yes, yes. Is is if you if you lose that three weeks is nothing. It's nothing. But at the same time, it's everything. Because after three weeks, you can have your ticket to China or you can be discussing, fuck, we suck. And 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 then you have to do stuff uh, because you want things to change. Uh, but what do you do? Do you, and, and I'm talking from the GM perspective, right? Do you change staff? Do you change players? Do you change both? Uh, do you change nothing? And what are the reasons for each? And then you have to make a decision and three weeks later, you know if it was the correct bet or the wrong one. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, I'm glad I was not in this situation for the last year <laughs> and I pray the Lord I will not be in this situation for the next months, you know, but it's one thing I, I learned over the last 10 years that it's e-sport and it can change every fucking time. It changed really fast. So we have to enjoy every split. There you There's go. more of them now. So <laughs> I, I remember now what I wanted to reference to, cause we, um, we, uh, I had a stake right to the to the staff, and and the main point was to of course elevate a player like Bo. Uh, but uh, the additional layer of it was that he has the the LPL experience, and I was always very curious about how they work and how the process is. But uh, every every question question that that he gave me the answer to, it was they keep things very very simple. It's it's basically just grind solo queue scrims very standard reviews and the expectations are just super super high it's like what do, you, what do you call standard review basically it's like oh this is a mistake this is a mistake let's look at these team fights let's look at these team fights let's look at these team fights because this this is what is let's say uh replicated right it's like he yeah. told me there was a big focus on 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 fighting right that would be like the thing that would be let's say uh, nuanced but the the general feeling that um, I got was that they don't believe that there is no, any problem that they can't grind their way out of. If if that makes sense. Mm. It's interesting they would focus so much on fight because, for example, we believe that's probably one of the stuff you can the least feedback people on mm. because it goes so fast. Like it, it goes so fast. There's so much data happening. So yeah, at the beginning of a fight, you can feedback position and how you ended up in this specific situation. But cherry pick, cherry picking details on a situation which will most probably never be replicated again because that's the beauty of League of Legends. Between the 160 champions, the map, the position on the map, the different cooldowns on everyone, that's one situation in a billion. So yeah, the player knows. If he died, he knows he sucked on this one, right? And ideally, yeah, he would yeah. play better. So, so the whole, the whole. So that's why usually we. It's more the, the, the setup of the fight or or, or the yeah what you're gonna do after. Um, but yeah, do how long do they have between well, that same as us, right? So probably 10, 10, 15, 20 yeah, minutes max. It's, it's similar, similar to us. I, I think that the main thing that that uh, that stake um, 
wanted out of the Team 5 reviews was for the players to kind of share their vision for what they believe their champion needs in certain circumstances. Oh, okay, okay, okay. He, he felt, he believed uh, that uh, this was a good exercise for everyone to kind of um, get a feel for what they want to achieve in fights and how strong they are and what kind of help they need. That's because, a good idea, actually, yeah. Uh, so it was, it was uh, less about the details of the mechanics, it was more about letting First the players get, uh, kind of share their vision for how they believe the fight uh, would go and why they are taking the decisions that they are. At, at first, I had the same reaction as you. I was like, I, I have uh, been very I careful you. with putting time into reviewing mechanical aspects, right? But in, in, in what, how Stake presented it, it was, it was, it was quite interesting. And I, I just brought this up because of like the mention of how LPL like to work. I think that they are just very, very grind heavy. And yeah. I think my experience in the LCK was similar in some sense, but I think that the standard for what is expected of the players is so damn high. It's like, in terms of what the players prepare in solo queue and how they review votes and what they believe is, um, let's say, the entry level of what is required of you when you are playing scrims, the standard is so, so high that a lot of bases are already covered, which was okay. super impressive to me, right? It's like the, the energy that was in the room because we had we have 15 players in total. We had, uh, I made a commitment when, uh, just because the, the, the team had heavy trauma from, from the spring split because their previous head coach basically swapped you played bad, you got swapped. You got swapped, you got swapped, you got swapped, and it was just, uh, you know, just uh, musical chairs, you know? And the players had no cohesion, and they were playing with this inherent fear that I'm just going to get you benched. You failed to move your bench, oh, yeah, and, yeah. And eventually it got to the point where they wished for being benched, just because of how much tension there was, right? So it's like, I was up front with the players. I was like, during my, uh, while I am in my quarantine, because it's COVID time, I said, uh, I'm going to assess a player's strength and then uh, we're going to make a commitment to a starting five because I want to build, um, you know, a cohesive roster that, uh, you know, will build off of each other. And uh, this was my, my main commitment. But we had, uh, then we made the commitment to five players. We had the five players in the other room, but the energy in the room was always so infectious. It's like the, the work ethic was, was always in place and was always like a given. And at the same time, this brotherly love that you wish your team to have and you really, really want to pursue that uh, comes in a natural way if you defeat hardships together is already in, in place culturally. It's like the, the older players were taking care of the younger players every step of the way. Booster for sure. You know? Nice. Every step of the way, the, the, play, the older players were taking care. Like Gorilla was, was taking care of everyone. He was taking care of everyone, made sure everyone's okay, everyone ate, everyone slept, like he took care of everyone on, on such a loving level, you know? And it's like, they would always, everyone would be so close, people would, would hug, and it's like during reviews, they would like cuddle in a brotherly way, you know? And it's like, this is um, something that is, um, let's say, tough to, to, to recreate, right? Tough to recreate. And those things were already in place in my limited experience was three months in, in the LCK. And I think still, you know, you watch LCK, the first thing they do after the match is done, they all go to the screen and they gather around, right? They gather around and they all review the game. <laughs> Every single team in the LCK does this. I think um, we were the only guys in, in Sandbox that uh, after the game finished, we made sure we go out for fresh air. We, we talk about the next game. We were the only ones. It was... The players were shocked at first. We're not reviewing the game? Okay. <laughs> Back to the board instantly. Yeah, it's, yeah. Okay. But, but yes. I think with those things in place, right, I still think the the same initial idea is there, that there's no issue that they don't believe they can grind their way out of. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, I, that's why the solo queue is so crazy good, right? Yeah, yeah. No, for sure. It helps. At the end of the day, you can have the best process in the world. If you're bad at the game, you're bad at the game. Uh, and the process are here to make sure you can perform. Not really to turn you into the best player in the world. You've, you've, that you have to do on your own. And it's mm. important that, that the player has it, you know. 
And I think that's that's the beauty of a player like Caps, for example. Is is he loves the game. The game loves him, and he's gonna grind whatever it takes to get there. Um, so yeah. I, I'm 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 curious because we mentioned about like I asked about how you guys um, prepare, uh, like how you do the reviews. Uh, how does uh, time outside of scrim uh, looks like? Look like it's like you guys. You mentioned to me last time when we spoke that you guys have a draft meeting ahead of every scrim. Uh, how do you yeah. guys utilize uh, the rest of your day? Um, sports in the morning. Mm -hmm. um, so look, you at night, all the boys are doing at least half an hour of physical activity per day. They do it in games. Uh, Isma has a million of ideas for them. Uh, he also work was a, with someone else from G2 called Richard to help them uh, train in the morning. As they do um, a spike ball game okay. a lot, uh, which they love, which is really good for coordination and everything. And they're actually really good at it. Uh, so it's really fun. Um, and yeah, we we make sure all the time blocks in the day are, are, are good, right? Uh, from food to the different meeting. And at the end of the day, yeah, it's going to depend. Depend on the day. Uh, some days it's going to be VOD with Zefman. Uh, some days it's just going to be solo queue. So we have one team dinner a week. Um, other day it's going to be a little anime night. Um, it has to be careful that it doesn't go out of hand, you know, because if you watch too much anime, then, then you play less solo queue. Um, we, we, we have a, a board uh, on on the on one of our own website where you can see the, the solo queue from from all teams combined. Uh, so it's like a little uh, weekly ranking uh, for the last uh, seven days. So it always rotates, right? So we can mm -hmm. see how hard everyone is grinding, um, and it's it's really interesting for us to understand at what moment you are in the split, who is grinding, what, and. Let's say the correlation of the amount of solo queue played per team usually transfer into some stage results. Um, it's almost like if practicing a lot the game creates some uh, good uh, muscle memory and mm. helps you to, 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 to be better. Um, the fine line is you don't have to burn yourself at this point where you start to lose a lot of game and you start to believe stupid theory like loser's queue and stuff like that uh, which can happen um so yeah it's a it's a it's a really great tool it's an important tool it's also a tool where you can have a really interesting relationship with so uh we speak about it a lot yeah of course because that's also our best practice tool right okay 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 no, i um i only tracked my own guys but it's 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 a nice idea to create uh, some um external uh, motivation to, to to make that comparison i i, I like uh, using using tools like that this is cool it's cool it can have other factors right because if one team is losing two game two days of scrims suddenly they're going to have 40 plus solo queues and rest so you have to take that into consideration um and we're also doing a lot of we have a lot of time block outside of the core scrim so uh if you know a team has less of those team activities Technically, they should be able to play more. And some teams have hardcore grinder as well. So sometimes you see a team high ranked and then you have to go into the details of it and you realize, oh, their ADC just went on a 95 games in a row streak. So he's carrying in team, his team instead of solo queue. Uh, and sometimes you don't have all the accounts because players keep making new. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe we have the best analysts in the world and you can find absolutely anyone anywhere. Uh, Rodrigo sees you. Um, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, of course, you can always sync an account if you want to, right? So uh, then it can it can buy us the practice and, and the data uh, data we're getting. Okay, okay. Well, it's like once again, it's like I've had conversations with Seik. It's like when when we were talking about like uh, the preparation for the next season, he told me plain and simple. He said when when players are losing, they try to get rank one, and. <sighs> His, his, point, his, his point was plain and simple. It's like, if you're a good player, you can climb and you can become high rank. And then he asked me, he's like, is it the same in, in, in Europe? I was like, to, to some degree. And then he asked me, he's like, who, who of the players can get high rank and who can't? And I was like, it began to, you know, move, move some wheels in, in, in my mind. Because it, it it's a very, very sim simple approach, but it's an approach that also makes sense. You know, it's like... The players that can put in the hours and grind when necessary, they, they manage to achieve uh, very, very high ranks. And I think there's definitely like correlation, regardless of what people want to say about the quality of solo queue or not. It's like winning games 
is still winning games. It's like the, the same laws and rules apply. Right? It's one of the tools, right? It can be, but yeah, for sure, it's probably the main one. Like if you want, one of, of our requirements is having five solo queue players, but we believe it's such a strong tool. Five mm -hmm. good solo queue players. Uh, we need you to be high, high low in solo queue if you want to be part of G2, uh, because we believe the best player in the world are high low in solo queue in their own region. And if you check uh, the Korean solo queue, once we were there, was probably yeah, Canyon and, and Showmaker, but that's a bit different maybe. But those, no, actually, that's a good good example because those two players are absolutely cracked. Um, and that should be the first requirement if you if you desire to keep control of your own life and win. You can rely on the people next to you playing good, but if you want to be the one winning 100%, you have to be, I think, crack at the game and that should make you climb solo queue easy. So, yeah, it's a strong tool, for sure. Agreed. I agree. That's why we track it and we make sure our boys end. It's also important to practice a good amount of R&D and efficient pick in solo queue. You need to play the pick you can play on stage, and you need to play some R&D stuff. You should not play only the pick you're going to play on stage, because if not, everyone first can see what you're going to play on stage. And second, you're going to lack pick for sure. But the, if the R&D is too big, then you go full R&D, and you're not practicing anymore your stage pick. So there's a right balance to keep in the middle. Mm. Uh, which is, for example, one of the talks the players are having with Rodrigo during the 101. They talk about their current vision of solo queue and stuff like that. They scouted things as well. So solo queue is a great tool to scout, to see other players, to see trends, to see potential new way to play things. So Agreed, agreed. I, I think what, what you said is so true. It's like, in terms of the, the practice methods that we have access to, right? Uh, it's like you can review votes, you can review scrims, it's like you can do presentations, but majority yeah. of time is, of course, the actual scrim games, which um, I wish were more efficient, right? And uh, then there's uh, uh, the solo queue. And uh, when you have a player that doesn't believe in solo queue inherently, it's like, you know, you either find a different way of um, improving. There's definitely like outliers like that, but it's more often true than not that you need to really, really utilize a solo queue for what it is. If a player comes to me saying he doesn't believe in solo queue, I would challenge it with, okay, how are you practicing? Because your teammates are going to go home after screams and they're each going to play three, four, five games, depending on the day and, and, and uh, queue time, right? How are you going to practice? And if you only watch VOD and do... The other tools available would be 1v1 or 2v2, yeah, yeah. Or, or like tracking your, your pathing in general, but nothing will teach you the game more than, than PvP, you know, at mass mass 5v5 PvP on the Rift. Um, and, and that's our best tool, because Screams, as we discussed, is a really limited tool, because it forces you on the same action again and again. And even those... We, we are spending a lot of brain power trying to understand how we can squeeze the best out of it. And, and that's why I, I needed to address something. I remember um, after Wales, uh, when we published the old Scream blog and people started to say, G2 play to win Screams. That's, that's, I, I, I initially wanted to answer to some of these, com these answers on, 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 on Twitter and, and Reddit, but then I realized we just lost, we got humiliated. Whatever I say is going to be wrong anyway, um, because of course they can challenge everything because we just lost, we didn't deserve it. Um, but we, we, we're not winning to play screams, but we're not, we, we're not playing to lose those scream as well. We're playing to learn. And if you want to learn League of Legends with the limited tools we have of a scream block, it's probably better if you win at the end, right? Because you want to play some specific pick, but are they good early, mid, and end game? Or are they just good for national? Or are they just good to push, to build, to whatever? So ideally, your players need to be trained to end the game because if you have the best strat in the world, but it never kills the Nexus, then it's not a good strat, probably in League of Legends, right? Um, so that's why I hope every team, when they start a scream, is paying to learn, and learning means probably killing the enemy nexus. So this this feedback sounded a bit to me like like those people starting to play solo queue and insulting one another. Oh, you're so try hard because they're losing. Mm. What do you mean? Of course it's try hard. It's a solo queue. You, are you playing to win or if you're not, go play a normal game, right? So um, and that said, losing teaches you maybe more, but the the mental 
price of it can be so excruciating. And yeah, I, I think most people are, are, are playing to win when they play Screams. It's not the first goal, but it should be one of the goals to validate your strategy is the right one. T1 plays to win. T1 plays to dismantle you. Yeah, and yeah. sometimes they do it without respect and they start some exotic pick and they do it with style. But if you check our screen from Worlds, we kept losing to T1. No one told them, you play to win Scream. No shit, Sherlock. I'm literally paid, actually, for this specific <laughs> to win and learn. So um, I thought that was, that was an interesting uh, an interesting thought process on it. Um, but yeah, we, we're playing to learn. And, and yeah, we are lucky uh, or we do the job properly because we win a lot of them. Now, if it doesn't translate on stage, then we suck. Then we suck, but then, then you have to learn from it. What happened? What did we do correctly on Scream, which we're not doing on stage? The other case can happen. Some teams lose a lot on scream and then they win on stage. What was different? Was it the setup? You can learn from both situations trying to find the right the right balance so at the end of the day you win as much as possible on stage. So how was how was your, your beginning of split? Were you guys winning a lot? Because when we met you in December, you were ruthless. You you we were like, wow. <laughs> We did. I, I remember doing some internal ranking with, with the rest of the staff and putting the teams in. You were in our top three, all of us. We thought, we thought you, yeah. So I think, uh, what, do you, what do you think happened? Yeah. I think we definitely hit the ground running. I think in terms of like assessing the meta, I think we are very, very sharp. I think that in terms of like in December, when we were drafting, I didn't think that, um, I didn't think anyone really had a clue. Uh, I, I felt like we had the, the strongest idea and we had a very, very clear like identity because we basically, we were of the opinion that if we can split the map and we can invade and we can we can dive playing Kalista Ash or Ash Varos, we would be super, super happy. So we were basically, our idea was we're going to continue on what was shown at the World Championship as a starting point and then build on that rather than starting from scratch because Good idea. a lot of things are going to still be true right and they still to this day are still very true right uh, i think this helped us a lot that approach i think also the players were um, like good individually and i think that uh, usually the early game seasons they are very very bloody games later on they're also bloody but uh, there is a more let's say clear focus on on the bigger picture uh, as you go deeper into uh, the, the season. I, I think that that was something that was very helpful to us, that the games were very bloody, dive heavy, and uh, basically gold leads would expand to like 10k very fast. And along the way, you would become, be like very, let's say, mechanically challenged. I think players like like Bo really thrive in environments like uh, uh, like that. So we, we started off well, uh, but... Um, I think that um, we are very careful with making sure that um, like I, I believe in the idea that experience is only experience if you take the right conclusions off of it, right? As so we were very, very careful about making sure that we we're very critical, even regardless of the result, because I believe that you need to, in a way, separate yourself from the result because a loss or a win for what it stands for can be equally poisonous, right? And um, and in our mind, it was we were always challenging that, but it was very easy because there was a lot of things to address because the game was so new. You know, like creativity is flowing, ideas are flowing, and the energy is in a very specific. You can't but look at me. Yeah, it's like this, the energy is in a very specific space. I think those seven days we only had seven days. Those seven days were were very fruitful. I think. Um, when we came back after December, it's like um, there was a very, very big adjustment period for us because you have players coming to Berlin, ass assessing like a new office. There's going to be content days here. It's going to be the big adjustment period, right? It's like how people react to that is 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 very uh, important. It's like um, you you move away from a life that you're very accustomed to, especially for some of the. The guys that was that were, that was were in KC and still in KC, like uh, they have made themselves king in in their environment by winning everything possible in the LFL and of course EMA Masters uh, further down the line. Uh, now they need to find themselves again in a new environment, right? And I think 
in that process, you know, it's like I had to find myself again, right? It's like, even though I imagined uh, how I want to work uh, for, for a very long time and I reflected on it for a very long time, it's like getting thrown back into it and adjusting to the new format, there's, there's a lot to take in, right? There's no, a lot to take in. And uh, the way I like to work is that uh, over time, I believe that I understand the individuals that I'm working with and I want to really build the dynamic and cater it for the individuals within it because of what I mentioned before, where um, I think uh, like you make a commitment to five players and uh, how this particular dynamic is going to have the most success is going to look very different from what a different dynamic is going to need to do in order to achieve success, right? And uh, as we moved into the split, it's like the, the main challenge was dealing with the losses and uh, making very, very strong choices with conviction, with very limited uh, information. You know, this was always uh, like the challenge. It's like we walked into week one, uh, we had an idea of a uh, Kesanta, and then it turns out Kesanta is the most OP champion in the game. And uh, we, we had a very terrible read on this in the week one, we walk into week two, and you, know, you kind of, you know, you have this uh, negative momentum that is always going to, to chase you. And then in those moments of, let's say, lack of, um, concrete data, you need to make concrete and very, very, let's say, uh, you need to make decisions with conviction, right? And I think this was um, like the main challenge for us, you know, it's like, uh, you, you, you need to deal with the issues that you knew you have, but things kind of emerge in a different way when you actually get challenged uh, on stage, because as you mentioned, it's like scrims is a um, is a must, but it's a very bad way of practicing and targeting what you're actually bad at. Because when it came to the stage matches, it's like especially our game against you guys, it's like we had three drakes against you guys. We had a very strong composition to fight uh, around uh, the dragon, but we suffered from impatience. It's like when, when nothing was happening in the game, we were not happy maintaining the status quo, even if the enemy team wasn't like progressing the game. So there was, uh, you guys played Kennen, LB, and uh, yeah. there was this essence of, oh, like we are winning. Why are we not putting our foot on their neck and squeezing, you know? Because this is what we were very used to doing in practice. And uh, in reality, yep. there was nothing abstract that could have been done. We should have just maintained vision, played for Drake 4. But instead, we tried to modified all the, the, the enemy AD failures on mid. And then it spawned a fight that created Nash. And then we got sick and tired of Caps like poking our Morphite on side. So we just threw everything at him and got Ace because Viego like murdered us. You know, this was something that got highlighted in a very obvious uh, way, right? And uh, then you begin to see you have three weeks of three days of scrim. You need to focus on that. And in that process, you kind of learn more and more about yourself. Because in that, even though. Uh, like we, we were zero three down. I think that how we maintained the group, I, I am proud of how we maintained the group. It's like the trust was still there. The commitment was still there. And this is like a big challenge, but it, it comes what at the cost. What was your plan on the Wednesday? You were zero three. It's not a good start, but it's mm. not done yet. How do you start your Wednesday after I, the day off? So, so, so after that, we, 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 we sat down and we, 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 we looked at things that um, can be solved with ease. It's like, I, I wanted to take an approach where we could see progress right away, just to build confidence. And I think a big part of that was just in uh, the draft preparation. And then I like, I basically framed the games and the reviews in a way where the solution was there just to create and maintain that level of, of hope. It's like, oh, look at this position we're in. These are the good things that we did. We are very strong in the early game. This is something that we can replicate. This is what we need to hold on to. Very important that we hold on to it. Because I think in that process of trying to improve, it's very easy to lose yourself. I think uh, like people have seen teams be in positions where they just look soulless. And I think that's where desperation takes over in a way where you begin to sacrifice what you are in order to find a different solution. Uh, I can give a personal example of mine is when we faced you guys in the first best of five, we 
uh, back in um, 2022 in spring. We beat you guys. Uh, and then in the second one, we got 3 0 We were completely lifeless. And I think a big part of that was that uh, there was an element of desperation and facing the fact that, wow, this team just got a lot better and what we currently are isn't enough. So we're going to just do some some random shit. And in that process, you look a lot worse and you just kind of fold, right? And I think it's very important to maintain uh, what you've done good in the process of pursuing, adding additional layers. So very important for us was to assess how we want to play, what we were lacking uh, in terms of the draft and maintaining what was good, which was the early game and using that as a strength. And then uh, we basically made the goal that we're going to uh, focus on how we set up around dragons because this is something that is tangible and something that appears in every game and uh, the practice essentially went good right? uh, I think we made the judgment call um, after the fourth game to abandon uh, the Vi and, and the Rakan even though it was essentially the main thing that we practice all week but we made a, a group team decision to to cr create situations where Bo is playing more of a carry champion so he can, let's say, drive the game more through his own perspective. But it's something that didn't work out. And I'm not going to say, uh, sit here and say that if we commit to this idea of Vaira Khan that uh, uh, we would have uh, gone further. But uh, these are the judgment calls you you, you make in, in, in the moment, right? But I think yeah. that that week of practice would, between yeah. zero, zero 03 and zero 06 was, was still a... A, a, a good practice, I would say. Good practice. Yeah, of course, it can be good practice. You can you can learn a lot from loss. It's just so hard to take it mentally if you mm -hmm. lose again and again and again. Or it builds a crazy resilience, and and that's why, for example, we we decided two years ago to never surrender a game because we mm -hmm. believe you. It it's like when you don't surrender, it's like playing poker with real money. If you go all in. You know there will be a price. Um, if you play poker with no money, you go all in all the time, right? Which would be what what I feel the the game with the ability to just slash FF if the fight went wrong. Uh, we just all in. We lost the fight. They get five kills. They're not probably gonna win. I don't want to play it. But then mm -hmm. maybe you shouldn't take that all in. Maybe you should. Maybe you shouldn't. You have to learn, right? But mm -hmm. and in this tool, you have to make the right decision at level two, and then all the way down to the end of the game. So um, the I think re slash FF think also be good. It can be good because it helps you to do the early game, which is the most replicable part of the game and can give you a lead to go to go to, to win at the end. So um I I can see both. Um and for us for us that was one of the call for example to make sure we take screams more more seriously. Um and also one of the challenges on scream is the amount of gold injected in the different champions so early. When you have 25 kills on each side at minute 12 are you really getting data? Um, and some teams fight crazy, and some teams fight more scared. Um, then you guys were fearless, for example, uh, on stage as well. But I think on stage, the enemy team plays more cautious. Yes, yes. So whatever you can learn from Scream, because you get a lot of those wins, because your top or your jungler at 15-0, maybe this champion is not that good when he doesn't have such a high injection of cash early game. So suddenly it changes everything. And, and I don't know. We need better tools. <laughs> we need better tools to learn than just playing the game over and over again. Um, Agreed. Um, I'm, I'm so happy that you guys... Like, this is something that has been um, a challenge that maybe... Like, I now regret that I didn't fight harder for it. And I wasn't harsher with my players in regards to how to, to treat scrims. Because um, with some players, it was easier. For example, like a Whipple, Whipple was a very good example of a player that, uh, like, he took solo queue very, very seriously. It's like he would never FF even in solo queue because he believed that everything translates. It's like how you play in solo queue is going to translate to how you play in scrims, and how you play in scrims is going to translate to how you play on stage. And I really, really admired this, you know? And I wish this was something that I had the power to instill in all of the players in essence, because you don't want to ever be wasting your time. And in practice, you 
the, the, the same ideas still emerge, even regardless if you're ahead or you're behind, the same details, you need to assess them together as a team and make the best decisions. So you can still yeah. actively practice. Sometimes saying, wow, guys, we are in a very, very losing position. We need to, uh, the enemy, the enemy doesn't have flash now. This is our window. This we need to, this is our best odds. If he has flash up, we don't have a chance. That's already very, very beneficial in, in, in a lot of cases, just finding alignment in regardless of the position. Because I mentioned this to you before, the hallmark of a great team is always the team you need to beat multiple times in a game. It's like yeah. 2018 Fnatic, 2019 G2 are the two teams that people look at as like the, the, the greatest EU teams. And I remember the games against them, it's like we could be five kick all the head. It just didn't matter. It was like the, the game was always yeah. challenging. It's like we had to play a perfect game all the way through. And the same is true for you guys now too. It's like you you don't you don't uh, you don't let the enemy breathe easy. You make everyone set for it, and I think that's so so uh, important. And I am very grateful to you guys that you guys have instilled this, especially with how you shamed everyone in the first place with. Uh, of course, releasing the list of scrims and mentioning like all oh, these teams cancelled, cancelled, cancelled. And this seems to be like a thing of the past. I think I had one cancellation from the opposition. That was due to illness. And, yeah, uh, but it, it, of course, illness. Yeah, illness is okay. I accept that. <laughs> it's just down. It happens, you know. And that conversation, yeah. like that conversation becomes so much easier for me and I believe for every other coach too. G2 is the best team in the region and they don't fucking surrender. They make use of every fucking game and they are, you know, breaking our ankles. So let's take inspiration from them. So I think you guys did a really, really solid for, for, for everyone. <laughs> and and I'm, I'm really happy it, it's going that way. Cause like if I, I checked again, the, the stats from last year cancel and yeah, that was, we've had yeah one cancel for the whole stuff and it was a game six cancel. So in the list of cancel, it's not the worst one, right? Um, but it's still one less game of practice for us. And that means uh, six, ten people in the other side of the screen are just, it's wasted time. Yes, uh, yes. And, and no one else uh, did this bit. So I'm really happy about it. It's cool. I think everyone wants to work and, and learn more. And it's going to treat Scream more seriously. So whatever data you learn from it matters and and then you can create patterns and you can create stuff so yeah i i think i've i've, I've seen a, a few comments on on twitter of people discussing the overall level of leagues and stuff the uh, leagues like the different leagues uh and maybe league league on its all um i don't think we're going to be able to say anything before the teams meet one another uh, on those new maps uh how much of the game changed and 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 msi is going to be really interesting for that i believe the overall level of the players is, is getting better um the way even the way teams are drafting is getting better the way everyone is is structuring their life is getting better um and and it's it's good it makes us stronger you know and and the final 3-1 okay maybe it sounds easy on the paper it wasn't easy again this first game really surprised us and then we had to sweat on the other games so it's cool it's cool because in the mad lion team you have rookies they aren't really rookies. They are direct byproduct of the beautiful, deep European ecosystem with the ERL and everything. And, and they are close. So it goes back to the beginning of the talk. But yeah, a bit of a UL a splice, a Vitality vibes where um, Rocket, the original Rocket, you know. Um, so yeah, let's get together and, and, and fight and play. And, and I think this kind of behavior, this kind of dynamic can beat the Asian teams. Uh, when you find crazy shit in the game, when you decide to go for a dive at four people and everyone clicks and does a tower confidently that it's going to work. And it does. That's the important part of it. Um, so, yeah, I think I think it's... We're all starting to work harder. Now we just need a bench of best of 5-1 versus Asian teams and there will be hope. Mm -hmm. Remember the dark age of 2017 when when making it to quarterfinal was, was something good. <laughs> when the best team was misfit because they took two games to T1. SKT1 at the end, of course, but two games, two games by the crazy on Sama and POE and Ignore and stuff. Legend. So I think, I think, yeah, of course, we, we, we tasted a bit, uh, the, the top in, in, in 2019, uh, and 2018, sorry, uh, and both those year. And now we've been chasing the high, you know, but I think we're putting in place the right process and, and everyone is, is, 
it's going to go well. One full, one, one more split, and we send uh, our two teams to MSI, and then let's make them bleed, and, and let's win. It's, it's, the practice starts now, so that's cool. Hmm. I, 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 I admire the, the work you guys have done in the last year and also this year, because I get the impression that um, what you guys are thriving for is to not be a victim of circumstance. Because when I look back at 2018 and 2019, there was a lot of things that happened to go right in order for Europe to achieve that level of success. I think, yeah. I think G2 2019, that roster coming together in the first place is um, a miracle of some sort, you know? It's like, in terms of how yeah. off-seasons work and having all those players align at the same time and finding their peak at the same time and, you know, Perks is a legendary GM. <laughs> but uh, uh, to, 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 to add to that, it's like... That's true. A lot of things went right. It's like uh, the MSI, it's, you had Team Liquid beating out IG and IG imploding, which is back to our initial conversation, right, about how you know, fragile uh, the competition is and how resilient you need to be in regards to anything you might face uh, as a squad. I feel like you guys are taking steps that um, leaves it more in your control, if that makes sense, you know? We, we, we're doing where we're doing what we want. I was going to say we're trying, but you should not try, you should do, as you would say. So <laughs> we're doing what we believe is going gonna, is gonna to... Get us a trophy at the end, um, and yeah, it's it's. Uh, we just got the ticket 48 hours ago. Uh, we got the ticket to China, so now mm. we can see if our new improved processes are working. And I'm glad so far they are, because in case of a loss last Sunday, that would have mean we have to to challenge ourselves even deeper, and then then it gets sad. Um, mm. Yeah, it, it's going to be really interesting to see the rest of the year. Uh, I, I, I still believe uh, we can we can win for real. Uh, but it starts with the day-to-day. -day. That's the goal really, really far away. It starts with how we're all going to spend the two weeks of holidays, um, how we're going to restart the season, um, the three first week. Everything can happen. Like, what if G2 loses the first six game in spring? then everyone's going to lose their mind. Uh, There's going to be some conspiracy theories that we want to go to China earlier to practice. And <laughs> the reality would be, we just suck. If we lose six games in a row with those high performers, which is bad. Or some people are good, and maybe some people are really, really good. What would have been the narrative if Matt won on Sunday? G2 bad? Matt, uh, that would have been G2 bad or Matt good? I think initially people are saying, oh my God, G2 was bad. And because it's a new team, they don't really know them and stuff. What if that was the beginning of the Mad Legacy? And they go into winning spring and they go into MSI. They do top four, which we haven't seen the color of a top four for a while. Um, and then they go June, they win everything. So it can, change, it can change at any time, any moment. And at the beginning of the G2 2019 year, we didn't know. Mm. And, then, and then they do this crazy clutch at MSI and, and it's all after 2018. So we start to dream and we're happy again. And then this specific model of players at their peak together. I don't think we can replicate it exactly. Things were different. Time were different. Yes, yes. Team was functioning differently. The tools we have were not as, as de developed as it. It's five years ago. It's five. We're getting old, my dear. Yes, yes. <laughs> so it's not yesterday <laughs> anymore. You know, in, in eSports years, it's like 20 years at least. So um, we, we have to find the new, the new method. And, and I believe we're slowly getting there. We can learn from sports. We can learn from other eSports. Still, we have to structure our daily practice around this stupid tool, which is we have to play a full game every goddamn time, um, and we have to squeeze the best out of it so so we can practice. Um, okay. okay. So no, I think I think. Oh, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. No, no, no I, I lost my thought. What I was thinking, but where you go? <laughs> no, I just wanted to reaffirm that. It's like I, I, everything from from both of our conversations and my overall impression and how the team is progressing. It just seems like a more consistent way of, of, of finding the highest peaks. I, I think that um, in, in the past of 2018, 2019, th those teams, I think there was a lot of circumstance that just happened to happen that uh, made the team succeed at the same time having very, very strong like individual performers. 
uh, really, really peaking uh, at, at, at the right time, right? As a basic, right? You can if you need the best players if you want to win. Yes, and then you put what you believe as the best process on top. Um, what and the best process usually you can find them by discussing with everyone. What would you say you did really well this split? What process did you like? What worked? What if you had to restart the adventure? You would start by implementing, or you would care more attention to. So I can shamelessly copy past it mm. to make us better. <laughs> are you asking me, or this is what you ask your players? I'm asking you. I'm asking you. <laughs> right now, I'm asking you. I'm also asking players, to be really honest. Uh, that's part of the workshop at the beginning of the year. Uh, that's how we stole what I believe is. Well, when you start this commando, especially because we're lucky enough to have experienced people, for sure, they went through their life at one point where something worked. Let's copy past it. If it works, it bangs. That's that. Just want to win at the end. I don't want to be right. So that's my question to you. Um, Gimme. Hmm. So I, I think if there's anything that I walk away of, uh, like from 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 the split and, and and being proud of it, is the fact that we maintained ourselves. Like we 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 carried the same belief of what we could be. When we, all, when we all signed the contract and we maintained that belief after 03 okay. and 062. I, I think that in terms of how we made sure that everyone bought into the vision and the, the work we needed to put in, I think that we managed to maintain a very good level of, let's say, being pragmatic about the situation. It's like, oh, is there a three down? What can we actually do? And the conversations that we had, like the post-match debriefs, the meetings on the Wednesday morning, it's like the, the process of how we went through those is something that I think that we did uh, quite well. You know, There was a lot of other processes that needed to be fine-tuned in terms of how I used the, the, the staff and how I utilized them and how the players used their free time and uh, there was a lot to to learn about the players, to to push them more, to engage more, and everything that happened in the day to day, and uh, really, really expose themselves in terms of. How would you improve this specific part, this whole communication stuff? What would you implement to 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 make sure it's more consistent or, or better fitting? If you could go back in time and restart that in December, I think. I think my. My main mistake is letting people take the easy way out. You know, I think okay. in some circumstances where players are not feeling it, they take the easy way out. But in those moments, they need to be pushed and, and, and challenged because the argument for the benefit of engaging with what is going on and voicing your ideas, this is the only way for you on a personal level to reshape your bad ideas and to also elevate the group with your good ideas. All right. There needs to be an active, let's say, marketplace of ideas. It's like if you just keep it to yourself and you are in your own mind, this is where you're not going to expose yourself on that level because there needs to be trust. It's like you need to feel like you can say the wrong thing and people around you will help you to move in the right direction or best case scenario you are moving the whole group in the right direction and i think in the beginning now as i was getting to know the players i sometimes let people take uh, the easy way out and that is a regret of mine because I think that I need to carry what their ambition is every day with me. It's like I need to remember that all five of these players, this year is career defining. Maybe this is the last split they play. Maybe this is the last year ah. they play if things are played wrong. And that is my responsibility in the end. And everything that we do in the actions of the day to day needs to, you know, have that level of intensity, you know, in terms of what we are trying to pursue. It's like we want to become the best, but the any motivation for what is driving you yeah. needs to be the fact that it gives you the discipline to do the things that maybe you like doing less, 
but doing them as you fucking love them. You know, this is where I needed to challenge them much harder and push them because I let them take the easy way out. Yeah. And the easy way out is me providing them with the solution. But in a lot of cases, the solution needs to come from within. Yeah. Of course. And motivation easily get dissolved in the daily life yes, schedule. Yes. And then the reality of things can, yeah. Okay. okay. How about I ask you now the same? Uh, if I could restart this year, <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't change a thing. No, I would change a lot, actually, uh, even this year, because um, I believe we, we ended up split uh, with the trophy. So I'm really happy. I don't believe the level of play we showed is good enough to beat Asia and, and to what we believe is the right way to play. Um, something something you mentioned about the fight at Dragon on, on the, the G2K Corp stuff, uh, when you said they couldn't be patient. I think that that's high level League of Legends right here. And it's to understand the map and everything so well that you see the right timing. And I believe that's most of the reason why we lose to the Asian team is because they most of the time are better than us at identifying those timings and we burn and those and by timing i mean this moment where all your skill or you have all the summoners and all the ult and you're on the right choke and everyone is at the right moment and they know that if they just lost something they lost the player stuff they know there's another timing at 12.50 when everyone has that and they are patient enough to wait for this specific moment uh, where I believe in Europe, and that's a lot. That's one of the things Duff is helping us a lot: is be fine, but understanding how your comp works and wait. Just wait. Don't don't take it. You don't have to do this play. You're winning already passively. The question is: Are you really willing? Do you believe you're winning? Because if you don't believe it, you say, "Yeah, but this play could work." You know, that's a thirty percent chance play. You're winning ninety five percent if you don't do that, and if you go do something else. The question is: If you just give the players the opportunity to do or not do, it's not ideal. You should give him something mm. else to do. If you go there instead, up, you have an action to, well, whatever. Uh, so you, you get the idea. And I think this, this passion stuff, this at what time can we come back, is something we have to keep learning for sure. Okay, okay. interesting. I, I think this is also, it's like a lot of people are curious about why, let's say, super teams fail. I think in a lot of cases it's because they disagree about what, these moments but are those timings yeah, 100% it's 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 like we, we 2022 i had players that had won the lec from with with very different teams it's like razok was the only one that wasn't the champion uh, upset two but we had humanoid from from mad lions Haley from fanatic and wunder from g2 they all had kind of different ideas of how to win and the big challenge was it's like how do we agree on those timings within the game because I think with what you're saying, I think it was very evident, especially in game four against Matt. It's like the level of commitment to certain decisions when you guys chased after Supa on his Varus. It was very evident that a decision was made and no one fucking hesitated at all. And yeah. sometimes that hesitation can be a killer. And that level of alignment and having the idea of what are your best odds to win the game agreeing on that and making a commitment to that decision is a big part of the struggle that most teams uh, face i would say especially when maybe your favorite player out there uh, you you think they are really really strong players and maybe they are underperforming in a team it's because of elements like this pretty much yeah because you bring only 20 percent of the game as a player and the way you communicate about those situations and What's going to be the first target? If the five top players enter the game and they all <laughs> go for something different in the first second of the fight, you're not going to win. And and that's why if you can identify this fight is going to happen 30 seconds ahead of time, maybe you can align on some stuff. And and it's it's just the more they learn about the game, the more they understand all those pieces coming together. And and I think the Asian teams are really good at that. So that's why we have to learn so much. And and I also believe when you get a lot of good players together to build a super team, how good of a player are they? To me, a good player is someone who knows why he's winning. And he knows. He just doesn't win because he plays a lot of solo queue. He knows he wins because 
He knows the right timing at the right moment, at the right thing. He knows how he needs to play. He knows what he needs from his teammate. He knows what he needs to ask him. He knows how to deal with bad emotions. He knows how to deal like... For me, the perfect players is able to fix in-game and outside of the game problem. And that makes him crazy. The same way a teacher knows a lot of history, he can speak about it. That, mm. That's a requirement to do the job properly. Uh, the best player in the world should be able to deal with outside of the game stuff and in-game stuff. Of course, the in-game is the most important. If you're bad at outside of the game, but you're insane at the game, you can probably make it. If you're good at outside of the game, bad in-game, you're never going to make it. Uh, but it's fine. So, But there is there's a ratio, right? But they, they, they should be able to communicate all those stuff. And I think a lot of that resides in, yeah, communication, actually. Um, but definitely, the, the, the players that consistently find success across multiple rosters are the players that can enact their ideas and also teach people those same ideas in game and outside of game. And I'm curious as a follow up because I'm, I'm worried that uh, further down in my life, my biggest regret in the European League of Legends is that I never get to, to, to work with, uh, with work with caps. How, how, how does CAPS function? Because there's, um, there's a pedigree. It's like every, every team with CAPS manages to be a, a top contender. And it's been true for a very, very, very long time, ever since he, he joined the league, even in 2017. He was a very feisty player that had crazy, crazy lane phases. And he just um, destroyed perks in his opening game on Rise. I remember the cheeky moves that he did. Um, how does Caps function outside of the game? Um, Caps is a is a fascinating fascinating human to work with, on top of being probably the greatest Western player we've ever had. Um, and in it's it's a luxury, it's a blessing, and sometimes extremely complicated to work with him. Um, he's a man of many many different approaches of the game, um, and and. Maybe the the claps are craps uh, <laughs> stuff is is a bit true, uh, and and I think from from all the boys I've been working with, uh, it's been the third year with Caps, and he's the one who grew up the most. I think uh, from year one to year two, and then the addition of Isma really helped him, and now the addition of Dubs is helping him even further, um, and he's an extremely gifted player uh, with a lot of specific ideas about the game, and the way he speaks about the game is. Is detailed. He has explanation for everything, and he keeps challenging himself. It's it's someone with a lot of humor as well. Uh, someone really, really, really sensitive to his external environment, uh, and extremely driven. And the game is is a lot for him. Uh, so our job is to make sure he's happy as a, as a team member, mm. um, because League of Legends is a team game, and and you need to. Your vision needs to be shared with the rest, and it's also someone who can be discreet, you know. So if he doesn't want to talk, he doesn't want to talk. Uh, sometimes he has a bit of more mute days, but I think every players have that. Um, so maybe more than a normal human, not at the top level of uh, the League of Legends ecosystem. Uh, so it's a big part of our of our job as staff to make sure everyone feels comfortable, has a minimum amount of external interaction. They can just focus on being crazy good at the game. Um, and yeah, everyone wins with Caps because Caps is gifted and our job was to make sure he's surrounded by four other gifted players. Uh, we fit with his mindset, his vision of life and everything. Uh, so we can we can win even more. And and now I believe we are at a point where we have four to five carries in the team. And if one day Caps is not having a good day, then the rest can carry. And if one day BB is not having a good day, the rest can carry and stuff. So which makes us more versatile as a team um, and really strong. So yeah, I had a few people telling me, but you're only winning because we have Caps. No, we're winning with Caps. That, that of course, <laughs> we're winning because we are playing with the best mid laner in the league. Yeah, that was the plan, bro. Uh, we're here to win, you know. Um, Maybe there is a different timeline where I do my same exact job in another team and I don't have caps and I lose. Maybe there is another timeline where I do my job in another team with caps and I win. And and but I don't care about those timelines. Uh, I don't care about being right about my method. I believe our approach and, and the method work with caps right now, making him extremely powerful. Um, and just having him in the team is 
not going to be enough. Uh, you're going to need the four other players, and they're going to be they're going to need to be extremely skilled in game and outside the game, so we can perform together. Um, and I hope we are going to write this year the most beautiful page of the League of Legends history, you know, by winning everything and getting world at the end, and then Caps can get what he deserves. Finally, the World Trophy, and BB can get the same, and Yako as well, and Hans as well, and Mickey and us. So, yeah, TLDR, I love working with Caps. That's it's not good. everyday pink, but is is if it's a day where he's gonna smile and make jokes and find some crazy pick, that that's that's a cool day. It's okay. happening a lot. Oh, it's nice. <laughs> I see. No, I I felt like um, yeah, BB for me was the MVP of the finals. Yai could be my second guy. We'll probably put uh, caps on 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 three. Uh, I think Hans Sama was a victim of circum is like circumstance and. And, and and Mickey had some off games, but uh, it it plays into to to what you said. It's like Mickey has has earned the right to have some off games. Like he got the MVP of uh, of course the whole season last year, and I think that he he deserved it because he was so insanely consistent and above and beyond better than everybody else, right? And I I think that it really speaks into to, to what you're saying. I'm, I'm I'm curious just so I can envision it. Let's say. Um, Caps recognizes that there is a a flaw in the team. Uh, how, mm -hmm. how how does he work then to 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 solve that? Does he actively pursue it? Is he actively engaged? Does he does he have the habit of never letting things go until they are as um, he wants them to be? I don't want to get too much in the detail of the okay. daily functioning of the team. Um, <laughs> sometimes he needs a bit of help to phrase things. And I'm not going to put caps on the spot. I think every player, I think every human needs to do better at this specific stuff, which is I identified something which is a current challenge for me, and I'm going to do everything in my power to fix it. Mm. And most of the time, you just CBA about it and you're expecting for things to change. Or you're expecting, well, I'm surrounded by clever humans. Of course, they're going to see the same stuff as me and they're going to fix it. But you don't, and it triggers you, and it triggers you even more and more and more, and then it starts to blow up. Mm -hmm. That's why we speak so often in all those different safe space. We have the beginning of the day meeting where we can already assess, and then the staff can quickly speak a bit to people to understand. We have this block between the screens. Those one-on-one -on -one are key for that, to understand what people want to change and make sure it aligns with the rest of the team ID. It could be pick, it could be way to plays, it could be draft uh, draft patterns, it could be a lot of things. So um, if, if all top level pro players were really good at expressing their ideas and pushing their own, own concept into the game in a team environment, we wouldn't have a job <laughs> to let's phrase it that way. And the coach job would be would be a bit more limited. I'm I'm pushing it, of course we would still have a job. There's a lot of other things we do. But I believe a big part of what makes us good or bad at our job is the ability to make sure the player can express what they want, feel. And and it's not always easy to do that. And and it's not because I know how to do it that I'm good at doing it as well. Uh, it's always easy on the bench, you know. It's like mm. someone is asking you for relationship advice. You always have the best advice, but your own relationship is shit. Well, that be the same kind of stuff. But I believe we've done a good job at having both. Um, so it's working. And yeah, enabling your players to communicate their new ideas, a specific way to uh, play the game is, is most of the job. And then making sure... It's not five different versions of playing the game. It's the second part of the job. And making sure we can replicate it multiple times in a row and staying focused every single time so we don't randomly troll one game is probably the third part. Agree. I I agree with you wholeheartedly. I, I think it's a part of part of <laughs> the imagine? challenge, right? Why? Right? Because <laughs> it's like we 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 work with players that all have very, very different backgrounds due to coming from different countries and uh, coming from different teams. And uh, a lot of things can be lost in translation sometimes. I always bring up the same example. Like when I joined Vitality, I had one Italian, one French, one Polish, one Portuguese, and one German. And I'm from Sweden. So it's like in the beginning, I didn't understand half of the things that were said, just based on our accents. <laughs> and in that process, you need to be very, very diligent and maintain the trust that everyone's doing 
and saying the things that they are because they want things to move forward in the right way. <laughs> but if you interpret things sometimes through your own lens uh, and your own perspective, and you take for granted that everyone's going to communicate in the way that you're used to, uh, this is where uh, a lot of danger can, can of course appear, which is another advantage that Korea has, right? It's like the- It's true. It's also, it can also be our best uh, sources of inspiration. Agreed, yeah. Because, because you're putting five people with a really different background. So that means for sure they're going to have different ways to see the game. And what's going to make you a strong team is to each of them need to understand what they are exactly bringing to the game, at what moment of the game they're good, on what kind of champion they are good and, and they, can, they can bring stuff to the team. And then you have to craft all together the same vision of the game, which is one of the exercises we do a bit in our workshop at the beginning where people have to sit down in the same room and discuss with Dylan how do they see League of Legends. And, and, and by nature, you're going to have five different perspectives because you have five different roles, but also all those backgrounds you mentioned, because it could be the way you, you entered the game. Did you start playing Warcraft 3 into the game? Were you too young? Because some players have to be too young to have even known Warcraft 3. Uh, and did you, how did you start the game? How did you learn it? And, and, and how did you grind it? Uh, what champions did you grind with? So it's all going to lead to different ways to see the game. And then something broken called experience, which can be a really weird. Uh, yeah. It could be double-edged, uh, but that's why we, we have the luxury to be able to work with players who have seen so many different international events. They've seen every meta uh, for most of them. That means if you're ADC, for example, uh, for example, you arrive at a tournament, Hans is never going to have to learn Kaisa, even if it's not meta right now, because he knows Kaisa, because he went through those meta where Kaisa was broken. Um, and so that, that gives you this whole patchwork of idea about the game. What's going to be important is to connect all this knowledge into, into moments. So when you arrive at this team fight, second, second Nash from red, whatever, everyone has the same plan. And the challenge, they could have five winning plans. That's not the point. They need to align in 0.1 second on one plan with all those knowledge. So they have to talk about it before, ideally, but you can't always discuss before situation. So that's why watching the VOD and, and, and doing the exercise um, you, was talk, you were talking about with Steck, for example, uh, Steck, when, when he sees the team fight and you were saying in the Chinese reviews, they would, they would ask, okay, what was your intention? I think that that's exactly this element is in this specific situation, based on the knowledge you had, what will you do? Oh, okay. That's, that's, uh, and the best team, they all decide on the same target and the same move. They all decide to retreat. They all decide to engage. That's what we strive for. That's why working a lot with the same players works. It's better if you win along the way, so you manage egos and everyone, and it should help you to accelerate. At least that's our bet for 2024. Um, but I think it helps, yeah, to understand. That's why it's also it's a crazy legendary bot lane, you know? They've played together all this time. And then I hope that the legacy Hans and Mickey will live, you know? They know one, one another so well. But, for example, knowing one another so well for our bot lane is an identified strength. This needs to be kept alive. That means they need to do the specific one-on-one -on -one regularly. They need to watch VOD, just the two of them. They need to know what pick a good or bad, what combo. That's why they do so many 2v2, for example. And they study the game together, because if one goes left, one goes right, in those microsecond fights, level two or three, you might lose the game, especially in the way the game is done right now. So it's, it's really, really important to see the game the same way, ideally, same as a jungler and then same as the mid and the top, you know, but especially those two, as uh, they need to align with different background. No, I, I, I agree fully. I, I think looking back at my time in Fnatic, uh, Upset and Hilly, they were at their best that year due to, yeah. uh, like basically they put in so many hours together. It's like, basically we would have, they would they each have crazy. three League crazy. of Legends clients running and uh, they would dodge to make sure that they are 99 LP. They just dodge their promos to master just so they can do a Q, do a Q, do a Q. And yeah. at the time uh, you could uh, have MMR that was high master, grandmaster and still be in diamond. diamond and we they really, really abused this. And they basically would spend like 12 hours a day to, to, together. And this made them better than anyone. Like this made them better than anyone. And then when they we went to the World Championship, it's like we, we had the, 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 the horrible circumstance went down. But when we practiced 
when we practiced against the Asian teams, this was um, the the first time I was at the World Championship where I was like, fuck, man, we can actually like compete because we had uh, Bwipo who brought in a very, very fresh uh, perspective. Uh, like I think Adam and Niski had to deal with the shock of like screaming against the Asian teams. Like Adam was, you know, oh, yeah, he, that was his first world. He, just, he got oh, wow. completely like shocked. It's like Adam. Uh, like screaming against Nuguri and you know it just uh, you know yeah <laughs> it just it got completely blasted you know but and nevertheless back to the initial point it's like though like Hilly and Upset it's like they were competing against uh, Gumi really? Ushi, they like nice. against T1 we go 3-3 three, three. Right. like the only team that that fucked us the only team that really really fucked us was just EDG and they won the tournament at the end it was just Viper Mako uh, they were a little bit uh, like we only played two games against them, but they were very special in the zone. But for example, against Damwon, like Damwon had no chance against us. I think we went like eight and one <laughs> against them. It's like oh, they, wow, they had okay. their Canyon Showmaker, and it was basically like a race. Yeah, okay. And, okay. Uh, and Ghost would like hide in the reckless bush. He would be like fifty CS down, and it was just <laughs> it would just be be in trouble. But that effort that they put in to make sure that they were aligning and Hilly and Upset were both people that really cared about every single detail to the point where like like Hilly would be like you moved here you clicked here why the fuck are you clicking here you could auto one more time here why the fuck aren't you doing this and absolutely the same way they would be like so engaged in every single detail and then when they played on stage they didn't have to say a word it was just clockwork it was just whoosh, just easy that's good practice that's exactly what I it's harder for other positions yeah for sure like the jungle and jungle doesn't really have the one v one top uh, tool, for example. Jungle cannot cannot do this one v one top mid or bot with two v two can do. So so, I think that's one of the most interesting role because the transition from solo queue and how what you need to do to be recognized as a good jungler is probably to get top fifty solo queue consistently. Mm -hmm. That will probably require you to play a really specific way to win the game, which might not work in competitive game competitive play where the amount of resources you're going to get is different. That gives this weird scenario where you're going to have super carry carry playing jungler available on the market, but most of the time you're probably going to need a tank to set up your lanes and everything. And then yes, yes. I think this whole, this, yeah, how do you practice and master this one? The VOD are good for sure, um, but who, gonna, who are you going to watch as well? If you watch a lot of LCK, LPL, how much should you copy that draft? Why are they doing what they're doing would be one of the big questions. That's the moment where, where you get the Rodrigo in and data can come from you the different patterns. But <laughs> yeah. No, I, I something that we we started doing, which I wish we started earlier, was just we, we created like focus groups with uh, the roles that have uh, uh, like a lot of, uh, let's say, interaction within the game, where uh, we would pre prepare like very focused vote review sessions where I force the players to engage with one another to to make sure that their ideas are on the same page. And this was something that was very, very fruitful. And I you mentioned before like your conversations with Mac. It's like Mac it, during the mad years when they were at their best, it's like their scrims were so shit. Their scrims were so so yeah. shit. And like yeah. beating them was so easy. Like I remember every world championship I get, I hear from their coaches like we we are not scrimming we're just we're gonna look at some vods and then we're gonna walk into the games and just do our best we are not scrimming it's like they, 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 their usage of scrims was so terrible they kept winning and the way they practiced was they were looking at uh, vods together and finding conclusions together and uh, I think uh, and anything that provides you a different avenue of actually actively practicing I think excites any coach because we feel let's say, uh, you know, caged in a way due to the limitation of uh, what scrims are. <laughs> that, that's for sure. That's for sure. A bit of a different approach we have. Uh, and it's also a, a working one. Um, and that's why every time we've had to face Matt for the last last year, I mean, it's a, it's a Matt from Mac, um, I, it was a battle of... of strategies uh, also in the way you manage a team uh, and the beat us we beat them I'm happy we were the, the, the one winning at the end um, but it's for sure a lot of things to learn and, and yeah BODs for sure copy pasted stole no shame <laughs> if you win more at the end it's a good strat let's, let's play the strat 
we're just live theory crafting on a big scale League of Legends with professional geek. So yeah, anyway, we can get better. But yeah, so you confirming to me that VOD are definitely uh, one of the best tool for sure. After yeah. so with right. SoQ. Um, we also did some some VOD only between players, uh, the five of them, which is interesting because the way they would communicate with one another is different than if staff is not here. Um, oh. and then, then they would say things, but you also need to make the time for the five players to sit together, um, mm. which can be a bit challenging in the, in the daily schedule. But those those are also strong, yeah. Because then you don't have the fear to, you don't have the feeling to be at work, but still you're working. We're always working at the end, but you have to manage the moment you have to be super serious and the moment you're a bit more chill. Hmm. Okay, that makes sense, yeah. There was definitely cases where I felt it was right to remove myself to make it less formal. Oh, and, yeah, exactly. Like we, we had like morning scrims, and if I was What time room, do you do morning scrims? It's like this was during the time where we play, like basically during the December bootcamp, pretty much. What time? So basically we did morning scrims from like, um, it could be like from 11 to, to 1. Uh, but this is not something that worked well oh. for us, right? Uh, yeah, that was my next question. How were uh, it was LEC teams? Uh, and it was LEC teams, sometimes mixed teams that we just pieced together in, 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 the, in the scrim room because yeah. it was very specific to the fact that we didn't have access to solo queue, right? Yeah, uh, of course, of course. I was, uh, okay. And, and eventually we realized that some players, they don't want to... Uh, like they they want to have a space where they warm up on their own, where they don't uh, get judged yeah. on that level. And some players want to really, really try hard. So there was just a, a lot of friction in that. But uh, I realized as well that as we were doing those scrims, that it made more sense for me to remove, remove myself because <laughs> it became too formal when I was there. You okay. know? So I removed myself from those situations just because I wanted the players to interact with one another on their own, you know? And challenge How each other a little bit more. Uh, it went better when I wasn't there, and then, <laughs> but in the end, the conclusion that's, that's was for sure. In in the end, the conclusion was we we shouldn't do uh, morning scrims, and also uh, the night blocks didn't work out for us either because basically we made the goal for ourselves. It's like we need to make sure that the six games that we play are as good as possible. Like if we are losing quality Wait. after four, five, six. What does it give us to add more games? There's a lot of things that we can do that will improve us. All the time outside of Scrim should prepare us for Scrim. So if we're adding blocks for just to add blocks, just to tell people that we are Scrimming more, what's the fucking point, you know? Yeah. It's like a, a player playing intense solo queue can be very fruitful too. So we we basically just did the, the six games in the end. Which is in a way a shame because I, on the paper, I believe more Scrims should be beneficial because that's exactly the stage stage setup right mm -hmm. those five players with a bit of pressure some prep for the game and stuff we've had pretty bad results with night blocks as well uh and i'm just not meaning we lost those it's the quality of reviews were not good the quality of gameplay everyone wasn't full focus um which if we had a system making sure we could be 100 percent ourselves and try hard at night or in the morning for for, for what it's worth i think that could be better because it's more scream reps um the truth is is i think it's it's motivation at one point it's it's hard to take those games full and i think your mind comes up easily with excuses <laughs> if, if it's like seventh game of the day you're like, ah, it doesn't matter anymore um i think some of the asian teams are doing the triple block and i remember from worlds we had to pass on a lot of night blocks because we believe it didn't fit our schedule properly and and all at least the way we were treating those blocks uh which is maybe something we will challenge this year um going going again uh to msi um and maybe try some during the spring split but i i i agree with you i think it's hard to stay focused uh, and and be get meaningful learning from those maybe it's better for the players to be able to get two three more hours of his day and be chill rest play some solo queue and and rather than those extra scream yeah yeah, I, we'll I, see. I, I think that the, the challenge always, of course, is to find the balance that makes sense for your team. Because I remember 2022, it's like I was talking with Genji, we did a lot of 1v1s against them. But the only time they yeah. had time for 1v1s was at 1 a.m. And yeah, the yeah, reason they only fun. had time for 1 a.m. is because they had morning block into regular blocks into night block and then into Jesus. 1v1s. So they basically yeah. played 12, days, 12 games a day and also the 1v1s. 
And at some point, there's an element of, you know, I, I think that in terms of where your group fatigue is at, individually, it can be very different, right? Some players need a break after scrims and then they play solo queue. Some players are going to jump right into solo queue because they still have energy. I think the challenge is always making sure that uh, you have five players that are in the same state of mind. And um, mm -hmm. something that Steak also shared with me because we had this conversation, I was very curious to always pick his mind right in regards to how the LPL teams approach night blocks, right? Because they like to scrim always at the, the World Championship. Uh, we would always find scrims against uh, the Chinese teams uh, uh, during night blocks. And he said the, the approach was a lot more loose. And uh, basically he said that the whole focus is just uh, take fights as five, draft towards it and just fight. That's basically like always his 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 his, his phrase is always very short. It's like, yeah, we just draft team fight and we just um, fight. Yeah, we just fight and then we look at the fights and then we scrim some more. <laughs> very simple. That's yeah, probably, I think the removing a bit the, the, the pressure for the night block and, and giving a bit more slack about how we're going to fight and still playing some a bit more less conventional draft is, is probably the approach. Uh, we, we're going to... We're gonna discuss it internally and uh, <laughs> and and find find a, a solution for this year. Um, but yeah, I think in an ideal world, having this extra extra block uh, should be good if we can incorporate it the right way in the schedule. Um, especially when you're abroad, uh, you're jet lagged, new environment, cultural shock. Um, but yeah, of of course, it works for them, right? <laughs> they keep yes, winning. Yes. So, um, but let's let's understand how we can win with our own stuff. Of course, of course. I think just just to add, I think the the teams that are successful that don't do night blocks, they spend their time doing very other beneficial oh, things. Yeah. I just want to make sure because I think the average fan out there will say, "Oh, this the, the Asian teams are screaming more, and that's why they're winning." But sometimes it's not that simple, and there's definitely Asian teams that yeah. scream less, especially as you go deeper into World Championships. If it's um, in the wrong region you won't have access to to, to practice uh, easily sometimes and there's definitely been cases where uh, teams that are winning practice less you know it, it all comes down to of course approach that makes sense it's like th these are decisions micro decisions that you take on the day-to-day -day that of course uh, affects everything and you need to judge based on the data that you have and that data is your players right that's true uh, i believe Still, at the end of the day, the more you play the game, the better you're going to be at it. Um, so, yeah, if we're not doing screams, at least people should solo queue. And, and, and when you see the amount of games played on the Korean ladder and the Chinese different ladders, at the end of the day, if we want to win, we have to play league a lot. Yes, and big yes. plays. Um, but the playing part is, is for sure going to be important. Um, yeah. Agreed. Solo queue, 1v1s, 2v2, scrims. This is what it says. POD. <laughs> good sleep, good food, so you don't tilt and you don't burn out. Speaking a lot, sharing your ideas when you have them. Be positive about it. I, Let's uh, go. I, I wanted to bring back the conversation because now it's like people don't cancel scrims as much, right? People don't cancel scrims. You got no. cancelled once, we got cancelled once because of illness, right? And uh, this, this has moved yeah. everything in the right direction. So initially, the whole release of scrims was to create some level of accountability, right? But yeah. now when this is out of place, like uh, people don't cancel as much anymore. Uh, what's what's the main reason for the release of, 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 of the scrims? Um, I believe this is really interesting kind of information, which I missed when I was not in the team anymore. I did UL, I did Optics, and I spent three years at, at uh, Riot, where a big part of my job was to still deal with teams and and. and work on the business department um, and I missed I missed the daily life of a team and and how narratives and and everything the, the craziness of one week of work which you don't have in in a more regular job where you work on a monthly scale or on a six month scale you know all the projects are on a few weeks in a league team your project is a seven day project six days sometimes how do I win next game and it makes you feel alive. And and those those schedule, which the schedule is a tool, it's it's our mini map. 
it's I, I, I place it on the bottom line of, of our main review TV and it's always there. And it helps, I think, the players to have an, a macro approach on, on the season and to understand, okay, that's where we are. We have seven days more. We, we did that last week. And all oh, this action I'm doing start to scale because I can dilute it. Okay, every day I do that. So I, I think it's, it's a nice tool. And I would have loved to read those stuff <laughs> when I was on the other side to understand a bit more how the team were working and stuff. Um, so that's what I'm, I'm sharing it for the old, old young fan. Um, but I don't think it can give it can do any harm to no one, nor neither us nor the other teams because the season is done. The patch is going to be different. The game is going to be different, and we share a bunch of numbers. You just know we won some screens. We lost some on what specific day. You can try to correlate it to some specific games, but it's one percent of the iceberg. It's still an interesting one. You can see how we structure the media day. We can see how weeks looks like some patterns maybe. Um, but I think so. I hope other teams can. I, I would love to see that for the other teams because I don't know how my colleagues are working as well because no one knows what to do at the end of the day with a new industry. Uh, I'm probably a dinosaur because I've been here for so many years and still it's nothing if you compare it to any other job. I've been doing my stuff for 10 years. Oh, in some job you're a rookie after 10 years. <laughs> like you still have so much to learn. Um, so like it's it's. I'm down to take any ideas which work from any kind of management sports and stuff. Once again, I just want to win at the end. Uh, so that's what we're doing. And and in all the storm of comments which happened in after I released everything in After Worlds, there were some ideas, there were some comments which were good and said, oh, yes, that could work. Oh, okay, maybe, maybe not a lot. Most people were focused on results. I'm curious <laughs> about the sense. good. Let me hear the um, good. <laughs> no, there was, there was, um, there was, Time management. Uh, there was there was some some specific feedback on the team we played, uh, or so whatever domination we had. Some people thought it would happen on some specific days, but the reality of the team was we were actually struggling at those moments. And and so it was interesting to see actually how the number can bias the perspective. Um, but I think it was a good exercise. I like doing it. I will keep doing it. It feels even better when you win because that's that's look. We did a good job. Mm -hmm. And 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 I'm proud of the the sprint the split we just had. I'm proud of the boys. I'm proud of how hard we worked, and I'm proud of this victory at the end, which proves a lot of stuff. So it's bragging a bit as well, of course. But through through bragging like that, I'm committing myself to keep doing it. And it hurts when you lose. I wasn't happy after sharing it at Worlds, you know. Of course, sharing everything if you go to the final and you win, yeah, you're king. We just shit on everyone. Woohoo! If you lose, you suck. And statistically speaking, we're going to lose at one point this year. And I'll do it and I will fix like shit. But I think it's going to be really interesting for everyone and you can learn stuff. It's also for the other teams. They can see who we are good against. And I believe coach and manager can read the subtitles, which is, oh, because their play style was good. Oh, because, oh, that's interesting. I think it's a bit dead data, which is good for the ecosystem to understand how we're working because we won a lot. So we're probably doing a bit of it good. Uh, and it's good data for the public to understand the life of a team. And sometimes if you lose and you get some death threat in the player's inbox, they understand, wow, but they're working a lot. <laughs> and we're all working a lot. And it's a hard job. It's a fun job. It's an amazing job. But it's a hard job because you never stop the grind. And at one point in League of Legends, you're going to lose. <laughs> so unless this is a year and you're the one team amongst 100 which wins everything. That's that's a gamble we're all making, right? So, yeah, that was, that was the whole the whole idea. Um, okay. Initially, I, I did it at the end of the year with everything. So I thought there was too much data and not that well utilized. So now I'm going to drop it at the end of each stuff. Uh, of course, if I believe we drop too early from a tournament and it can have some impact, I'm not going to do it. But overall, who, who could be the full strategy based on the ball I shared? Nothing. You can probably learn some stuff. You can copy past. Do it. Do it. Beat us with it. And then tell me how you did. <laughs> so we learn as well, you know. <laughs> yeah, that would be like my, let's say, main point of criticism was that uh, releasing it during the World Championship, I think, creates additional noise uh, to the teams actively competing that uh, maybe it doesn't matter. Maybe it does. But the fact that there is a question and it adds a layers of noise when the competition isn't finished, 
I think that was like the main thing that I was taken aback by because I think after competition, I think it's perfectly fine. Yeah, that that uh, that's a fair feedback. Um, I'm not sure how that could have impacted anything. If if you think about it, it was right? it was a bunch of results. Most of the Asian teams probably didn't even see it because they're not really connected yeah. to our own our own networks. And it's it's a bunch of number on the board. I hope every team has deeper layout of organization so they can see already so 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 much more data than this. Uh, I think it's more to me it's really dead data. You you, you can't you can't really squeeze. Um, maybe you could see they played two days ago this specific team and suddenly they started to use this picked up lane. Maybe did they learn it from the team they just scream or from another team? But those are all speculations, and and so I don't think it has any impact. Um, if, if I was sharing picks, of course, but I would never do that. You know that that would be being extremely bad at my job. Uh, there is no secret shared, and even to the granularity of pick, that's why we have analysts to understand what the other teams are playing and everything. So I think it would it's full uh, harmless. Um, but yeah, depending on what's on the board as well, I think it's more informative than anything. Um, Yes, yes. I guess my, my point of criticism was less about the competitive advantage, more so about, let's say, how the public reacts and adds additional, let's say, oh, yeah. pressure to the situation, you know, because some these things do get cross-posted, but I think uh, uh, that the point has been made. And I, I think to, to add yeah. a... No, go ahead if you want to, to add something on this topic. No, but the topic. The, the noise is good. People talk about League of Legends. People talk about team practice. People talk about results. The noise is good. And between the million of stupid stacks, there are going to be probably thousands of really good ones, which are going to make the ecosystem advance. If only one bunch of pro team or even amateur team saw those boards and realized, oh, wow, G2 screamed a lot. They worked a lot. This this many days per week, that's how they do it. Maybe I can steal this this pattern. Maybe I can force people to play. I don't know if if it can inspire a tiny bit people to work harder it benefits the region at one point like like but just just for a bunch of people and then then it makes it worth it and all, all the hate i got from it which is just people not against me of course they're not mad against me they're mad against us losing and 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 suddenly it's like oh but you were so good you're so bad you world <laughs> what was the title scream world champion they're correct Actually, probably not, because the truth is T1 was probably World Scream World Champion as well, because it's so freaking good on Scream, uh, and they deserve both the title, you know? Um, but it's, it's, I think it was fine. And especially right after losing, it deflected a lot of the noise, I really like the word, um, the social media noise on, on those results and a bit on me more than on the players, which were feeling like shit. And it showed also that the team was good. If you work that hard and you win so much on the way to the last level of the dungeon, maybe you should keep them. So maybe it was a way also for me to see, look, so yeah, was I, I know we just suck and we got eliminated, but maybe we should do something. And when you see some of the online conclusion being, I think you should keep them all. I was like, yes, that's exactly what we're going to do, my boy. Uh, mm -hmm. And we did. So, um, so yeah, it was, it was to create noise, of course. I think it's good. I think it's good people realize what we're doing behind the stage and, and, and how it evolved from 10 years ago. I guess uh, the only thing, like I, I agree with everything that you're saying, I think to, to, to protect, uh, to benefit your own team, that should always be the priority. And I think it, it did that. And I think that um, having visibility on that, I think is, is, is generally a positive thing. It's like the only thing for me is during competition, there's like a, a bit of a, an agreement almost about how the information is sacred, even though most of the time everything gets leaked anyway between uh, between regions. But I, I think this, yeah, secret to what extent? <laughs> of course, you keep you keep what you're playing secret, but the 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 how a team function should not be secret because not fully secret because I believe the value is on the human. The value is the value is on the people. Like, I have no problem discussing how we are scheduling our day and how a team works. And I remember back then, team were really protective of it because I believe what we're doing is good, but we can make it work only because we know all the steps leading to it. I can tell you to do a workshop at the beginning of the year. That doesn't mean your workshop is going to be good or bad. doesn't even mean my workshop is good. So that's why I, be I believe in the people we have in the team and I believe on our capacity to create new process all the way along. So what I'm saying, I hope, is already obsolete. 
because we're going to challenge it for next for next split. Yes, so yes. no, I, I I think I I admire that, and I think that's good. Right, I I, I admire the the viewpoint that you have, especially being the team that is the top dog. Is it's always the same. It's like it's becoming a champion is is easier than becoming a champion again because everyone's going to come oh, yeah. after you, right? Everyone's going to come after you. Yeah. Everyone's going to model their team to to beat you guys, right? You have nine teams that should I'm have down. the full intention to break you guys. That should be their main goal, main intention. It's like when in, in previous years, when I've competed coming in as an underdog, it's like the main goal. It's like 2021, it's like when, when G2 signed Reckless and everyone said he was doomed because G2 has ru ruined Europe. It's like, I, I my, our main goal was to fucking beat G2. Like, I, we wanted to beat G2, we wanted to break them. And then through that, Mad Lions emerged, but uh, that, that hey, yo, yeah. it's like the, the, the best team really, really shapes, of course, uh, the region as a whole, because everyone should come uh, with that uh, level of intensity. And I admire your viewpoint. Uh, because you invite that, you want that to happen because you realize that this is the only way for you, not only way, but a very, very important um, aspect of your own improvement too, the, the challenge, right? And um, I think for me, when I saw the fact that you guys have won all of those scrims, it's like I, I mentioned already before, I think that you guys had a, 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 a good year. It's like a very respectable year, a year that... I admire from what I knew, from what was going on inside, and also viewing it from outside too. I think it was a very, very good year. With, um, but, but there's cases where you take all the right decisions, and still in those moments, with the information that you had, uh, it sometimes on the day, maybe it's not enough. And there are certain things that you're going to improve on and learn and do better, 100%. But in regards to the scrims and you guys winning the scrims, I think this was a very good thing. I guess the main nuanced question that I think that I saw appear and that I had on my own mind was if you guys succeeded, right? There was the, the certain three bands, right? Callista, Draven, Oriana. Um, were this, where was there playfulness? in those scrims that you won? Was there an exploration? Or was it championship draft, rock and roll? Were you guys playing Kalista, Oriana every game? <laughs> no. Why would we do that? Okay. We, 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 and, and that was one of the bias which I can understand when you study our run through worlds. Hmm. But we, that would be really poorly done job from the coaching staff to only play the same draft every single time and winning on it, that would even be impossible because the other team would start to actively ban it. Mm. So that would mean at one point you start losing games. If only you're really good at two things, right? So of course, the more we go, of course, the chances for us to get Draven game is pretty low. Everyone's banning it in Scream outside of it. So, but it still means that needs to be a strong strat for us. So we should be able to have four, five, six different strategy, strong one, and then more rotating as R&D project. Of course, we, we, one of the mistakes we probably did at Worlds was to specialize into only a few strategies, which for at least two to three of them, we couldn't show even because the draft didn't go the way we wanted and, and it didn't work. Um, and we lost because it played better than us uh, at the end of the day, uh, sadly. But we, 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 we played so many different pick. Um, when in, in our internal website, which tracks everything, you, you can see the, uh, the, the champion played per player, the stats and everything, and, and the diversity. So what's, what's always, always a bit interesting is to check how deep the list goes per player. And, and then you have a color code, of course, if you're winning, losing the ratio and stuff. So you have the graveyard at the bottom of, of uh, each list, which are the champion we tried a few times and didn't work. And when you check the whole list, you can see the tens and tens of champion played on every lane. Um, so now, of course, we were doing R&D. We didn't do the right R&D at all. And, and, and we were not scream champions because we are playing only screams, uh, only things we couldn't play on stage later. Of course, we had to rotate everything. Um, the truth is, 
teams in front of you adapt and they learn as well from the scrim and you meet them again, you know? Um, and, and, and for example, maybe one of the strong component of the scrim day versus mad this week was twisted fate, um, which maybe we played two of the six game or three of the six game. I can't really remember in scrim, you know? So it gives them a bit of data to know, okay, what we're going to do from it. But of course we're going to rotate what we play. Uh, if, if you, beat someone with one strat four times in a row, of course you're going to change for game five. I don't even think players would have the, the focus to play the same shit five times, you know. Of course, someone would come up with a crazy, crazy idea at one point. So, um, and yeah, we stepped out on Sage on Sunday and, and they had the perfect plan into Twisted with some beautiful flex, top, jungle, blah, GG, props to them. So, no, of course we're doing R&D. Like, how can you have caps in your team and always play the same stuff it would go crazy. And I'm not even going to start on Mickey capacity to find new picks on a daily basis. Uh, or Yike, with his heart always oscillating between 10 different picks. No, no of course. I, I ask not because of myself. I wanted to give you, let's say, the platform to say this. Good, really, really nice of you, because that's true. I forgot this question triggered me. Uh, but yeah, it, it did when I saw it. And that's the kind of stuff... I cannot answer on Twitter because because there are going to be a thousand answers which are totally missing the point or even how a scream works. Yeah, but you kept winning. You guys don't know. You have what you have two digit on one single day. You don't know what we play, how we played it. If it, for sure our strategy was not the progress, the correct one. We lost. We got eliminated. And despite all the good things we did, that was a long weekend, and we took the plane ticket back home on a Monday. So um, yeah, we we we're learning for that for sure. Um, the way we, we, we deal screams for, for this year. But we're going to keep doing a lot of R&D because we also need more mastery on some speak. If anything, maybe we need less strategies to beat Asia. More well-oiled strategies. Some stuff... We need ideally some stuff we know you, games, you win the game 100% with. And then, then, yeah. We're working on it. it is. So, we're not champion yet. We, we, we have the ticket to participate the main arena it's like pokemon you know you need to beat a few dungeon uh, not dungeon uh, uh, towers and then you can go to the next one this tower <laughs> gave us a ticket for the main one and now we're gonna have to play and then when you were talking about 2019 before saying it has to be the right timing with everyone to get a shot to get to get one shot to play and then yeah it's easier if your players are top level it's your right meta it's in a country where you can eat normal food with no jet lag and the stars are aligned then you have one shot that's what you're training for. Maybe you're going to lose this day, but yeah, I can't believe we had only two shots in 2018 and 2019. So we gathered the best player. We're trying to refine the best plan and then a tiny bit of luck, you know, to push us a bit, give us, I don't know, maybe one of the guys not on his meta and, and, and then you need the right three as well in the tournament. So maybe you can, I mean, maybe we had it, you know, maybe this year we were supposed to beat NRG, win quarterfinal into semi, into... But we didn't, so we cried and we go next. Just um, working the whole year to increase the odds of you being the outlier at the tournament where you had the mercy of many details. Exactly. <laughs> it's very exactly. cruel and brutal, but fuck me, it's rewarding. <laughs> <laughs> if you win, you're God. You feel so proud. Yeah. Yes, yes. We talked about this off season. You told me it was very, very easy. And the off season to create the roster. It's like oh. the, the the signing of Yike and the removal of some players. It's like moving away from Yankos and it's like really moving in the direction Hansama Mickey reunion, of course. Um how did that off, off season go? Because you guys won in spring, um. then of course summer. The finals was very painful for me too. I couldn't watch it because after seeing you guys play, I knew it was so doable. And it was I couldn't watch the finals. I watched yeah. it after the fact, but please. I watched it. My my, my question, uh, what can you share? <laughs> I didn't want the I didn't watch semi-final quarter, but I watched the final because the faker narrative was too insane. What they did last year was beautiful from, yes, yes. from top team into injury into our great. Um yeah, because this roster is the same. <laughs> so uh, the creation of this roster is the off season 
2022, mm -hmm. and then we decide to part ways with Yonkos and uh, with uh, Flakhead initially, um, because we had other plans for those two positions. Um, and then we get uh, Hans. Uh, one of the main reasons as well was because he spammed an insane amount of solo queue. The guy was traumatized by NA, coming back to Europe, went to Korea, mm -hmm. grind, and, grind into rank one. Uh, not really, but it was on a good way. No, went to Europe, rank one, Korea, top, top, I don't remember how much. And we said, okay, he has, we we, we, we need to work with him. Uh, we've had other prospects, I think, upset as well back then, but he had a buyout, so it's a bit more more complicated. Um, and then when he came to the team, he really wanted to work with uh, Mickey, which he met during all his solo queue. He played with him before, of course, uh, but it was like, I think that's the support I need to win. So then we also had to to, to uh, sit down with Sagamas. Um, I hate those moments always, uh, but that's part of, of the GM life. Um, and and then we had the we needed the last piece of our roster, um, which was the jungler. And we had the option between either a veteran jungler um, as a Yoya, uh, which would have created a team of five Loki achieved player, like a veteran player, or the rookie with Yike. Um, and we entered into a crazy off season with Mad, where we tried to buy a Yoya and it didn't work and, and things got a bit, uh, a bit crazy. And at the end of the day, we made the call, uh, okay, we're just going to go for the rookie, right? Um, we saw how talented he was, so let's go. And I believe it was the right call. Um, and it, it, it was really fun to create the Avenger spirit uh, to start the year. And when I go back in time in my head, the way we started 2023 was really different than this year. We had the team of people super hungry for the game. Hans just came back from Korea. Mickey was back at G2, so he had to prove he was even better than before. Um, Caps wanted blood after New York, uh, and Bibi was there. Uh, Yako had to prove everything, so it it worked really well. The way we're entering the year this time feels a bit more focused, a bit more precise. Um, not as much trained, because we didn't play that much solo queue in December for all the stuff we, we discussed already. Um, but with already so many good processes that I believe the feedback is better. And we added to the to the mix, to the, the, to the dish, some salt with Duffman, and it makes the taste come back. And, and, and I think it works really well. So uh, we, we, we managed to keep things fresh with only one guy and all we could capitalize on the learning. The post-mortem we did from 2023, I think was really good and we kept a lot of it. Um, so that's, yeah, no off season. Uh, it bangs. <laughs> I think it's cool and it helps you save a lot of the processes. For sure. Yes, yes. I, I, I'm curious just to, just to pick your brain in terms of how much you're willing to share, uh, like moving away from Yankos, how did that uh, decision come about? Because um, franchise player. It was a tough decision. And especially and it brings a lot to the team as well as a human uh, for this, like, you know, the two block of a player, uh, which which I uh, talk of in game and outside of the game. Um, I think we needed some some new stuff uh, in the mid uh, mid jungle relationship, uh, in in and in the big voice of the team. Um, so, yeah, the call the call was going to be was going to be on him. Um, he bounced pretty well, I would say, and he's proving he's still uh, the insane jungler he is. Um, I'm happy. I'm happy we went for Yaiko. Uh, but for sure, it led to a lot of reflection. Who's going to speak a lot in the team? Uh, and I think BB took over really well. Um, and currently in the roster, you don't have one shot caller. I don't believe one shot caller exists in League of Legends. Depending on the amount of data you have at one specific moment of the game, it's your duty to speak out and help the flow of the game. Uh, it could be because you have all the resources, because, because you have whatever. Like it's, it's not one shot caller. It's people should all speak in the perfect way, <laughs> ideally. Um, but but you cannot dilute the responsibility of shot calling into one guy. Uh, but still, depending on the moment of the game, some are speaking more than others, and some have a skill, which is a really good skill for a player, to extract info from people. And 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 the skill is adaptable, of course, <laughs> because you talk different to different people. Uh, if you're from the same country, it's probably going to be easier. Um, but it's, it's and, and I think BB is doing such a great job at that now uh so that that, that was really good um and and then we clicked the rest so everyone it's been a year and a half the five current players should know who has to talk and who hasn't to talk and 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 i believe now they're getting even better at feedbacking one another on when 
someone needs to speak more or speak his, his mind. So it was it was for sure a challenge. I wasn't hundred percent confident having to to re- replace him, you know, because he brings he's so disciplined. He, he has so much like I don't know. He's just a nice human, and on top of being funny, um, and he he it, it was good. He was a really good captain. He was a great captain for the team in in twenty twenty two. Um, okay, yeah, okay. brings well, memories. That's, that's fair. <laughs> Mr. Yonkos, I mean, you worked with him as well, no? Yes, yeah. yes, but this was 20, uh, 2015. El Marchin. 2015. I think when you had him, it was more... I think Yonkos had to step up a lot in 2022 as well. After the crazy year, the roster went through with the whole reckless and, and all those people living together and supposed to be the best roster ever created and biggest failure ever. Um, and, and, and Yonkos really wanted to... to to protect his teammates from external stuff. Um, and and it, was, it was nice to work with him to also understand how other players' brains work because he's good at that. Uh, and he was also good at being the, the responsible human between BB and Flacket, uh, which are both two hobbits, uh, which are really <laughs> fun to work with, you know? No, like the it's Mary and Pippin all the time. It's, it's, it's like the the Diagos I work with 2015 he was a complete different person because he was very very he was the same person in terms of the drive for the game in terms of the impact he has on people but less refined you know less mature because I remember it's like back then it was the wild west so uh, before scrims he had the habit, habit of dropping a donor and then it would be in to go to the bakery and buy an eclair. He had to have his eclair. <laughs> and then the screams would start. And at the time, sometimes, you know, in, in, in back then, it was very commonplace to be, let's say, more inflammatory in, in your language, you know, more demanding from your teammates. Yep. And um, there's a way of, of communicating things. Uh, I think it's... Um, it's a little yeah. bit of a of, of of the of the Polish mentality. I think they are very you know clear yeah. cut in the way they speak. But I think Jankos has um, found uh, such a high level of of maturity and and uh, also let's say the leadership that you mentioned. I think that has been very very evident from uh, you know his, yeah, his development. Yeah, there is, there is being right or wanting to win at the end. And 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 a lot of time players believe they're right, and they are in most cases. Uh, but if they want to force the truth in the other guy, it's probably not going to work because he's also a super competitor. And and finding the right balance of communicating your ID while still doing diplomacy, but making sure the ID gets to the end, is a skill. Uh, it's a team management skill that players don't or don't have. You can learn it. And and I think uh, I've seen the growth of Yankos in this skill. Uh, the the Europe. We we work together for sure, um, yeah. So I can see I can see where what you mean there. I, I it changed hope... a lot. You would like to work again with him for sure. <laughs> no, I I would imagine like I like something that something that stuck with me was uh, twenty fifteen after the year was over. Uh, we yeah we we lost against Origin and then they played against you guys in the finals of the regional qualifier. We lost against you guys in the BO5 when Vichichachi split push with Nar in game five. Yep. I was happy that you guys brought on my boy Horo from Michu Makers that he got to play. I, oh. I, 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 I love this guy. I, I love Horo super, super much. Um, if you want to dive on really that, sweet. go ahead. You can interrupt me. It was sweet. really sweet. No, no, you're just, <laughs> just re- giving me flashback. Yeah. <laughs> this we, is are, cute. We, we are relics we are ancient relics we, <laughs> we have all the <laughs> it was stories like good memories. <laughs> uh, it's like, what, what I wanted to share with Jankos is at the time he got an offer from TSM and at the time I know people think that TSM is a big meme now but at the time TSM was what? your ticket to of financial yeah. uh, like independence because you would this, stream this TSM calls you you pick up the phone yes you yes just... it's like TSM would be like if you were on TSM you would instantly get 10k viewers on Twitch and you would be set for life like you would be pretty much set for life if you captured the moment right but he declined because he wanted to fucking compete and he knew that 
he could make it without any, let's say, artificial boost. And <laughs> to see that he managed to feed into the competitive side of himself at such a fucking high level for such a long time, and at the same time build his brand at the level that he has, he has really, you know, captured the most that you can get to amplify your life out of esports, you know? He's, he's such a role model, you know, for really covering 100%. all of the bases uh, that uh, um, someone might find important, you know? And he likes sweets, which I do as well. <laughs> but he went a lot to the gym, same as me. So I could, we could relate when someone was presenting us with some good sweets and we were trying to be a bit mindful. <laughs> we're like, fuck. It's, it's, it's almost like every time he wanted something sweet, I, I, it was exactly what I needed as well, which was really annoying because it all, all the time looked good from the, whatever, well, I'm not going to drop was, a food name right now. but It was fucking rough at the KC office because it's like oh. we, we had some serious night owls you know it's like the, the the gang is hanging out there till really really late hours and then it's like we we are in the room 1 a.m we're planning to leave and then we see the delivery driver coming with the greasiest salty food well, <laughs> and people are enjoying it but i was like Internally. this is fucking painful man i yeah. want to ban this shit from the office but it's not my <laughs> it was painful so yeah we wouldn't you cannot eat at your place uh in in the facility uh, they can do that in the gaming house um to avoid the smell but eating late food has to Very be uh, done con consciously as well uh if it has yeah. to be done you know we're not police we cannot stop people from feeding themselves of course but if we discuss a bit about it maybe putting the right food into your belly is gonna help your brain to function properly the next day and uh burger meister which is an incredible burger from berlin <laughs> at 2 a.m. is not a good idea if you want the best cream this next day. So you have to be responsible. Just to make it clear, it wasn't the players. The players weren't allowed to do this shit, you know? It just, oh, okay. <laughs> no, it's just that when that sure. smell comes in, it's like, bro, I'll be down. Like, my body craves to eat some fucked up shit at that hour, you know? So it was like a I mean, mental fight that I related nine. to when, when you mentioned the sweets. <laughs> I'm going to order Burgermeister because of you, and I will love it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna love it. Um, but yeah, it's it's yeah. The food, for example, for food, Isma created the list of the restaurant the guy should order from if they have Nate like Nate like snacks. Um, but yeah, sometimes there's illegal stuff, right? Uh, that, that, <laughs> that's not good. That's not good. But you know, if uh, if I hear because we have the, the ring bell between all the apartments, so if I hear the ring and I go open and if someone comes for Burgermeister next time, I steal it for myself. <laughs> Uh, now, now I, I I want to ask you. You already mentioned two weeks off. You guys are taking, so that's uh, um, yeah. Two weeks off. It leaves you with uh, a week. one week before the beginning. One week. Yeah, right. Yeah, we're gonna start with a media day uh, into one day of workshop. Um, it's not gonna be long workshop. Maybe four or five hours, like a, like full a full big block to discuss mm -hmm. the, the, the winter. What went well? What went wrong? Uh, what other process should we implement? Uh, maybe do some feedback with like two weeks of of, uh, of chill in in your head, um, and then reassess how we're gonna handle spring. And yeah, and and let's go. Uh, it's gonna be five days of scrim, I think, into first game or four days of scrim uh, into into first official game, uh, and then the split restarts. You know, so it's important that those two weeks are really disconnecting for players. They need to. To, they need to rejoice themselves in the happiness of just winning. They need to go home to their friends, family, and talk about how cool they are and how crazy they are and get a bit of social media high and people telling you you're the best and bathe in it, enjoy it. That You, you earned it. Um, and, then, and then come back and, and remember, we're not champions. <laughs> we're not. Uh, it's just a ticket to another tournament, you know? It's cool. It's a cool ticket to get. I'm not down, downgrading the level of it. It's just we've been... Uh, assembled uh, to for a specific mission and we're still far away from it so let's go um but yeah those it's not exactly two weeks i think it's 10 days uh we did the media day what day are we we did media day yesterday i usually put the media day right after the, the, um, the end of the season because that way 
It's like the official ending. Up, you pay your commitment to the business lords by creating content, mm -hmm. and then you can go home and enjoy yourself, or stay in the gaming house and play, or just do do what you like to do and enjoy it. Okay. Disconnect from the game because I need you hungry when you're back. Okay, no, it's, 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 it's good. It's good to 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 miss to, to miss the situation, but to miss the game, man. It's, yeah. it's, it's very very healthy and the... also because we won. If we had lost. I would have a totally different speech. Uh, How would you <laughs> we do it if you lost? lost? Uh, earlier, we're back earlier. We have to try hard more. That means we need to be more fresh and you guys are going to have half holidays. Not half you do once again. I'm not forcing anyone. You do what you want. I believe if we failed, we could have improved on some specific aspect of the game and maybe you not fully disconnecting from the game is going to keep your finger fresh. And, and, and not saying it's going to be easy. Let's push a bit more. So we can win spring, because if we don't, you're going to have a month and a half of holidays, you fucker. So you can chill. You're going to have time. And, and that's why. It might be the last, last uh, straight, straight line for something. So especially because the first three weeks are rough, you know. If we were back on the old schedule, you have time to start to get up your solo queue number and the patch and everything. It's only three weeks, and those are deadly. The narrative changes fast, the motivation as well. So it's not one week we need. Uh, it's two at least so we would have adapted a bit to schedule uh, okay, okay yeah our, our intention being of course last place the intention like i i believe the guys carried the same intention was to just take seven to ten days off and then we have solid five four weeks of preparation they before did. the split starts and perfect and now the grinding I can tell okay. you the highest the highest team playing scrims i mean where's my uh where's my board where's the magic rodrigo board actually the intention was uh, at the beginning, the first week of arrival, everyone just grinds solo queue that is supervised and assessing the situation and, and talking about it. And I saw that you guys scrimmed them. I heard that from, from the boys too, because I stay in touch with all the players. Nice. Like, uh, I'm, I'm in still a very, very good uh, relationship with the players and, and of course the coaches. But um, they so, grinding. They went to they went to higher than 400 games of solo queue the week of the final, which is an extremely impressive number for a team yes, of five. Yes. And it shows, it shows you're managing your free time with a wheel of grinding, which is commit committable. And we, we played them um, the this, uh, this Saturday, 3-3. Three, three, and it's, it's, those were good games, you know? Uh, so it was interesting to have the... Um, we would destroy BDS in screen, we destroy mad. They challenge us, we, we learn stuff, we have to be careful of some stuff. And then we see a high level of solo queue, K Corp, little 3 3. Okay, let's let's talk, you know. Um, I mean, they are in a redemption arc, of course. And, and uh, that's the, uh, I call it the honeymoon phase, you know. You just change some people, staff, or players, and then you have to prove being part of the survivor means you have to be worthy. And, and suddenly everyone is trying hard. So, if they can keep the rhythm, uh, I'm down. We're going to have fun in, in spring. I want blood. I want fights. I, I am 100% certain that they will do well. Like, I, I think that, uh, like, already with everything that I saw and already, like, what we did in, like, the last week that we worked together, coming into the weekend, I think that um, like, this, this is a group of guys that have, 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 have great capacity. Uh, I think uh, just to to make sure that everyone understands is that 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 week where they put in 400 games uh, or what what the number was this was a week without scrims so they were just grinding solo queue putting in the hours yeah. and, and, and and prepping. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> yes, yes, that is true. That is true. And and <laughs> every time I would use the board with all the teams, the boys would always tell me, but. We know those guys were not screaming. We know this guy didn't do this. We know this guy didn't do that. <laughs> Which are, to be fair, all excuses. But yeah, of course, it's impossible to put 400 games at five <laughs> if you're still screaming and being healthy. And by healthy, I have pretty low level requirement. Sleep at night and eat decent. Yes, yes. Um, but yeah, okay, no, 400. <laughs> so it's like 70, 80 games. If that's 10 games a day. So you, you stop doing everything. If you also have to scream on top. If you're a professional player, 10 games a day. If you just have to do that, you double. <laughs> Roma, I need to ask. Yes, my good sir. Let's say we are talking again at the end of the year. I'm down. What is like? I'm hoping that we can talk after after every, after every split. I would like to talk to you after MSI and I'm after we chat with you. It'll be fun. Um, 
uh, I want to ask, if I ask you the question then, I ask you now, like we just have to imagine, what, what, what is a year, what is a successful year for you? And G2 uh, as a whole, because of course you represent G2. TV. It's, it's winning. That's, that's, that's the easiest uh, answer uh, in, in our field, you know. I want, I want to win spring to show we're able to prove consistency and clarity in the way we do it. Um, I want to go to MSI and I want to go to the final. I don't know if we're going to win it because it's a miracle of the day can make things change. Uh, but I want to go final and win it. And then we have to go back. We have to win summer. If you win the three of them, you have to qualify for Worlds. No. Wait, they change. I think if you win summer, you qualify for Worlds. So I want to be the first team qualified to Worlds. And that means we need summer split and July. Then we go to the roadshow. It's going to be in Munich. It's going to be cool. Winning on stage, on a big, big stage is always so much better. So I want to do that. And then we arrive at Worlds with four stars of European champion. And then and then, and then we're going to have to win. We're going to have to. It's in Europe. Jesus Christ. I want to go to, to France uh, to play there. I want to go to London. Um if I have to pick between MSI and Worlds, of course I pick Worlds. Um, don't to lose MSI if it means we have to win Worlds. I'm not asking for the Golden Road first year, uh, first time. Sorry, uh, just just Worlds at the end and giving. But that's the easy answer. Everyone wants to win. How are we going to do it? Is a hard answer. And I want us to show ourselves we're able to be consistent and committed to the processes we have now, enough to challenge them, to understand what we're doing, and to to have the feeling we're learning. So if we fail then it, we can start from somewhere. There's knowledge gathered somewhere, so we can go back to it. Um, I hope that means destroying most of our European colleagues. Um, at the end of the day, they are our daily life closest person, right? We play versus them all the time. So uh, we're all going to have to improve together. Uh, and if that means we need to lose a bit more to learn faster, I'm down. Um, yeah. Okay. And... Um... Now, considering you guys are running it back, Duffman's in the picture now. Yeah. What were the main lessons that you're going to carry from last year's MSI, last year's World Championship? What are the main lessons that you carry now coming into MSI now as you have your ticket already sealed? The first step is to create and protect the training ecosystem, which is always something interesting when you enter a new country, especially going to China, which is really high in the level of cultural shock you can experience as a European, because everything is going to be different around you. The cities are, are, are done differently, the, the, the whole nation works differently, which is really fascinating to see, but can be overwhelming uh, if you don't know anything. Your brain is always functioning, trying to understand what you're doing and stuff. So as staff, we had to, we already had some discussions about what we're going to do on first day, first week, um, how we're going to eat, how, how can we adapt as best as possible the current schedule there. Uh, managing a lot of stuff, so we're going to need to have the help from from some people on site uh, to to smooth ourselves into into the environment, um, and then we're going to need good scream uh, with different level of of uh, opponent, which should be kind of easy to secure because it's the same roster and we have some some experience from last year, um, and then we're going to have to be clever with how we manage solo queue in a different server because it's a big part of our day. Uh, we're going to have to be to ask the question, do we play night block or not night block? To what schedule do we stick? Probably the Asian one with the two to three blocks. Um, and then the tournament's going to start. There's going to be the social pressure from the first opponent, uh, which is always going to be interesting. Is it a strong opponent? Then we are underdog. Is it a bad opponent? Then we should be winning. How do we cut ourselves as much as possible from it? Um, and how do we come up with three winning drafts so we can blow up three Nexus? And then we start from there and we go semi-final. If we have to change location, it's going to be more to anticipate there. But first step is really to secure everything. And then in game, what patch are we on? Who is the carry at the moment? What champions? Did we, did we, uh, were we lucky with the meta? <laughs> That'd be one of the questions, you know. Are we in a Draven Kalista meta or not? Uh, and then, and then same question, but for every single lane. Um, I can spoil those two because they're constantly banned. So it's easy. But of course, every, Players that has a champion is strong with or not uh, with two different levels. So yeah, there's a lot to think about, and we're so lucky because we can start doing the thinking, you know, which I think makes you more prepared for there. 
Um, but we did the same level of thinking last time and we ended up still losing one game. So for sure, we have to optimize uh, like 10% of it, you know, in the feedback, in the who had the good idea or not, stuff like that. Okay. okay. I think yeah, taking two weeks off makes a lot of sense considering it's like when spring starts, that's when your run to MSI uh, practically starts. Uh, uh, literally. Do you I think we have two weeks after spring. Two weeks after spring and tournament begins or two weeks and you're going no, to be in China? No, we have to go there, I think. Okay. I think it's, I, I would have to recheck, but not even, maybe one week. The earlier the better, but it's not that easy because uh, you need visa and everything, but yeah. Is there an intention to, to practice in China ahead of time if you have the possibility? We can't, or? we can't go there earlier. Oh, okay, okay. The season ends up like... I mean, we, we could decide to end the split, lose after uh, <laughs> three weeks and go there. But the reality would be, let's, let's push the idea, right? Just to see. The reality would be, it gives you better, better smoothing into the environment. So you would be definitely more adapted to everything schedule related and living there. It also takes you far away from home for a long time, which can be annoying for certain players because they are they don't have these these resources to help them to recover energy uh so that's the downgrade to to take it to take in consideration how do we get better for those four weeks only screams i believe the stage experience is the best you need to travel to the studio go there get in the zone and and play those games play these high stack poker games with money screams are still poker with no money you're still learning poker especially if you decide i'm going to give 100 percent into this learning still you're never going to have the thrill of playing a game five on stage for a final. So I think we would lose in a way because maybe the first weeks, what makes those screams so productive is also knowing you only have two weeks of them. Having six weeks of them, I don't know how we would manage the daily life practice to squeeze the best out of it. I don't know if the Chinese team will scream us. Maybe from time to time, they could also decide to int us and all get together and decide, oh, they took a risk. We're not touching them. Uh, I don't think they would. But I, I think the risk would be too high. And at the end of the day, we're, we're competitors. We want to win. So you show, the, you show us the tournament, we're going to win it. We have to win in Europe. We're going to win spring. And by the way, all that is, of course, hypothetical. I'm not saying we're going to do it. Uh, uh, my dear CEO, Alban, if you're here in the chat or something, I'm not saying we're going to end the first part of the season um, and stuff like that. You know, like we also have business commitment and the more we win, the happier the sponsors are. So we're going to give everything for sure. Romar, you're and that cre- means you're someone else needs to win. Alibi. <laughs> you're creating the perfect alibi. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> I am. Go to if seven. we lose. <laughs> but... If you go 2-7, I think the mental state of the team would be so bad because of the expectations. I don't believe the guys would end intentionally. That means we just lost seven games in three weeks. How can you pretend to be good enough to go beat the Asian teams if you're not even able to win seven games at home? I hope you lost them because the seven other guys are better and they're going to go to Asia and they're going to beat them, which we will not know until MSI starts. But I can tell you if we lose seven of the first nine games, the talks, the daily life is going to be a bit different than it is right now. We're going to manage, we're going to deal it, deal with it. But yeah, I would rather win, we keep winning. You go to, you go, and then you arrive with a double title. So you get super cocky and you lose first round in MSI. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> no, not going to happen. <laughs> no, of course. As ah, MSI, the, the new format of MSI has made it very, very tough. With the ambition of making it to the finals implies that you've beaten... Three top-level teams then. Maybe it was easier, uh, but then. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> only the best team of each region meant only one uh, one China and, and one Korea, you know? And double so. elimination makes it very good. Too. <sighs> yeah, they can team come back. Liquid can't beat IG for you. And <laughs> no, I mean, they can. Then IG is going to come back. <laughs> <Yes. so. laughs> Angrier. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yep, yep. Or, or maybe devastated, then they're going to throw the game and, and that's the way, you know. At the end of the day, we probably have to beat all of them. Some of paths are easier than others, uh, thanks to... Uh, all you can do is to prepare for the best version of the opponent. And yeah. Whatever, yeah, yeah. Whatever we prepare comes, the best whatever version. comes. And then, and then. But yeah, it's far away. First spring, to prove ourselves we can be uh, reliant, resilient. I First holiday, to... so... I wanted to take it even further forward because um, something that has been a, a contention of mine and a concern of mine is uh, the, the scheduling of the LEC. 
Uh, when yeah. we qualified to the World Champion 2022, I remember that we, we basically, we had to play the finals, but we had got third place, so we had to play the play-ins. And just because we played play-ins, it meant that we basically had very limited time to prepare uh, just because of how late the LEC was and we had to fly over. And at the same time, we had players that got COVID, which is something that can happen, right? But players that COVID, they couldn't fly over, yeah. we had to play with substitutions. Jeez, yeah. But we had very little time to actually prepare for the event. And um, this was very problematic because, yeah, like essentially we scrimmed like four days before the, the event started. We could have stayed over Jesus. and scrimmed. We could have scrimmed against the, the, the Turkish teams but the concern of ours was also the fatigue of the players because we had to do the lower bracket run and everything was very, very intense for us. So we had to make like some judgment calls in terms of how we prepare for the tournament. The reason I bring this up is because last year there was the Asian Games, which delayed the World Championship till later, which gave you guys the opportunity to then practice ahead of time. Uh, you guys, uh, I believe you guys bootcamped. Uh, how long did you guys bootcamp? Yeah, three weeks. Three weeks. And yeah. Now we discussed it before with the boys, and and now I don't know how how far ahead of time you guys have, have floated this idea. Considering the World Championship is in Europe, 2019, a big concern for G2. I remember in their feedback was that they didn't they they had the World Championship in Europe and they didn't practice against the the Asian teams. And then when they yeah. came on came the first day, Damwon smacked G2 around, and they were like, "What the fuck is this?" And they had to catch up. Now, with the LEC schedule being the way it is, and also the World Championship being in Europe, uh, how, how do you plan? Uh, is this something that has been on your mind already? I love this question because that's it. I've had the discussion already a few times with my higher management because that's a question. We've had this question as a team as well in the workshop. Uh, but I think it's a really specific question, and 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 I love it. Uh, it means you know your job, because <laughs> those, those are situations you can only think if you've been through it yes. or if you've been in Gotex. So, and the real answer is I don't know, because two options. The first one is we go earlier there, we practice there, we enjoy all the Asian teams, we come back. Uh, we have to deal with the trauma of of uh, social cultural like everything we have to leave somewhere else for some weeks and then come back get back uh, get used again to the sleep schedule everything it costs cash uh it's not free at all um and it takes time as well the other version is we wait in europe so we protect ourselves in an ecosystem we know by heart and we can control really well but we need screen partner and at the end of the lc that means from the 10 teams seven of them are in shambles, probably already starting to rebuild themselves. Uh, the luckiest will be done already, so you can practice against them, but it's really unlikely when that's going to happen, which is probably end of September. Um, so you need the two other teams to stay as well, but then you create a screen bubble, which is a three team practicing nonstop, and actually when the two first are practicing, someone else needs to stay. So I'm not sure when the UM master end, but you can practice versus those teams. Maybe some teams will decide to come earlier to Europe. They could be Brazilian team, Japanese team, Australian team, NA team, uh, just to create a small scream, scream ecosystem, which could work. Um, keeping in mind the best practice you're going to get will be China or Korea. So you probably have to go there. Um, so I would lean more towards us traveling there to practice. But maybe for whatever reason, the Asian teams are going to decide to come earlier to avoid the cultural shock. Because in the way they see competition, they don't care about us. Like so, the whole idea right now, if you're a top LCK team, is not how am I going to beat EU? No, it's how am I going to beat China? And and will bring my player earlier to Europe give me the mental edge of administrative slash logistic edge over China? So if they decide that, which is of course something I cannot influence, sadly, if not, I would try to find a way to convince them to come. If they decide that, they're going to come earlier, so we just have to wait for them. Um, so I think this question exists. It's a real one. It's going to be an important one with consequences, because as you were saying, G2 2019 decided to stay. Not sure it was the best decision for them. At the end of the day, they went to final. Um, so, But the correlation between going to final and the decision from a logistic perspective might not be the right one, right? Um, so um, I, I'm not sure now. I see pros and cons in both. I think going there would be the best, probably. Uh, so we would need to anticipate a bit. The challenge is, you know, so late that 
you're probably going to have to take this decision on the fly while still pushing some options. Um, so I will have the answer early August. That's also why I want to win summer, because then we get the ticket, and then I know for sure whatever happens in München, I can start planning. Mm. And all those those logistic challenges connected to going to China, uh, sorry, to, to being in Europe, do we should we go to China, Korea or not, I can solve them earlier. Um, and we were lucky, lucky in, in last year because winning the first game qualified us. So winning the beginning of plane off. So I could start working on the Chinese on the, sorry, Korean plans mid-August, which is a luxury for a lot of managers. It's such luxury. <laughs> Most of them are going to have to prepare in the wind and, and decide early September. And, and yeah, so it doesn't make things easy. That's why one team is going to know what they do end of July. And yeah, then they need to speak to the nine other and say, what are we doing? And then the top of the ladder can say, yeah, maybe we're going to leave. If one of the three decides to leave, there's no more question. We have to go. Mm. If the three stays, it might not still be the right approach. So it's a great question, which I spend a lot of time thinking about. I don't have the answer yet, but I'm starting to see the different uh, stuff we're going to have to do for both versions of, of okay. the question. Uh, MSI uh, last year, well, when did the Asian teams arrive? It was quite late, right? But yeah, the they were NA late. Team, the NA teams were Super early. in Europe, yeah. Super early. Uh, we had Liquid as well, enjoying uh, the fact that everyone was in Europe to come and practice. We screamed them a lot. Uh, they were good. Um, so it's the more you have team in the same place, the better it is for everyone. Uh, because even if the top teams are probably gonna, only going to play the top teams, it's also going to bring a lot more players and the solo queue is going to get better. And, and Champions queue during international events is incredible. Yes, it is so good because because then you have you see all them and and you don't see you don't see those great player you don't see Faker in his formal attire to destroy people you see him in the dirt of solo queue playing like this so they play some stuff a bit more chill they're a bit less threatening you know uh, so and then and it helps also realizing they bleed they greed they do mistakes they tilt the rage the rage split push they, so <laughs> I think those moments are great and and I would I think. Most teams should just follow follow the horde, follow the pack, and go to whatever continent uh, the whole League of Legends players are. So yeah, we we saw a lot of influencers and streamers in Korea during Worlds. I think that was great. Mm. Okay, okay. No, that's uh, that's fair. I, I I agree with you. I I hope that you guys have the time and the yeah the time. I think that's the only thing that I would be concerned about because I trust you guys to make. Uh, uh, the right decisions. Always the time. It's yeah. always the time. And then, then it could work, right? Should we go there? Should we come back? How much of those decisions are really going to impact one specific day? You don't know, but you still have to make the decision. So I don't. And all that said, we're not even qualified for worlds. Mm -hmm. So I have to think about those stuff. I would be extremely sad if we're not, especially after we just won in 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 uh, in winter, right? But the year is long. Maybe for whatever reason, one of my boy hurts him, hurts him, hurts itself himself, and then he cannot play. Emergency substitution, and bam, <laughs> you don't go to world anymore. So all those plans, nothing. I'm on holidays early September. Great, I like holidays. Not when you're League of Legends manager, because that means you got eliminated. So. <laughs> no, of course, I know that all too well. Uh, I have the most extreme version of it. <laughs> yeah, that's the unforgiving reality of this new format, which yes, I think yes. is nice because it, it makes intense action. If you lose, you're on the sad end, man. And it, it giga sucks. Roman, we, 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 we've talked for, for three hours and 12 minutes now. <laughs> <laughs> How am I not surprised? <laughs> I wanted nice. to ask you, <laughs> is there something that is on your mind, something that we haven't covered? We've covered a lot share? of stuff. We've covered a lot of stuff. I'm happy. Thank you for having this talk My with pleasure. me. I'm so happy that you reached out to me and I'm happy I have one last of question, the wonders actually. of medicine. <laughs> What's your next step? Oh, I, I, I wish I wish I knew. I wish I knew. It's like, oh. I obviously my, my expectations and what I planned for this year and for my future um was was very different than it played out yeah. and um like uh, i was very surprised and taken aback by the decision that was made because i think i made it very clear in terms of how i like to to, to work and 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 so forth yeah. but 
you know, I, I have respect for, 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 for Casey and they have every right to take the decision that they take. In terms of what's what's next for me, I, I'm i very unsure, but all I know is that um, I, I don't really believe in slowing down. So I will keep as busy as possible. I will take the experience that I had and prepare myself for whatever comes next. I am curious about um, working in maybe different roles on the performance side. I'm curious oh. to figure out more ways of improving uh, the competitive side. And my love for League of Legends is never going to die out. So I'm going to keep co-streaming, yeah. keep going busy and just prepare, prepare for whatever comes next, because you never know which kind of doors might open. Yeah. That for sure. It's his spot. It's a new entertainment. So that's why I'm enjoying the win a lot. Cause I know in three, four months, things could be different. Yes. Yes. And that's all if the game goes well and the company behind the game goes well and everything, you know, so it's external stuff. You can lose a final because you played bad. You can lose a final because someone got sick. You can have fun in League of Legends if you're winning, but sometimes, yeah. Yes, sir. I saw, yeah. So are, there, you, are there any roles that uh, G2 is planning to expand to in the future? You know. Ah, there, ah. <laughs> so that's a good question. I'll be honest with you, League of Legends, I'm full. I have 10 people. Uh, every time I had someone, it, to, to my perspective and opinion, it requires such a long onboarding and everything that now we're in the train with full speed. All the, all the drivers are good. I'm full, but next year, you know? <laughs> well, do you have my WhatsApp number? No? <laughs> I'm just kidding, of course. <laughs> I do. I have your Discord. I have your Discord. Uh, but if 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 you want to work in other positions, uh, I think G2 is is always having, you know. Uh, well, that's uh, that's not a talk for me. Send me uh, send me WhatsApp. I'll uh, I'll, sh I'll show uh, you some people. I cannot say more. I am on the contract, so uh, we, we, maybe in the future. Nevertheless. Uh, Roma, this is always a pleasure. I, I look. I'm looking forward to the one after MSI, or maybe before MSI. You, you, you let me know. After, after, after MSI. After, after with a trophy or with some new ideas. Okay, okay. We, we always catch up. I love taking uh, time out of my day for this. This is always a blessing. I feel like I walk away from our conversation smarter and. Uh, uh, you were it was very, good. You were very gracious bitter. to me after after the news came out. You gave me such a bear hug. It was very very pleasant and nice. Yeah, I, I yeah, like you're in a you're in a not pleasant situation. I've I've been on because uh, when a team loses, it's so fucking hard. And usually people always give you love when you win. The problem is people giving you love when you win is half of them are interested because you just won, right? Mm -hmm. And usually when you lose, people are a bit ashamed of you. Like, ah, he lost. He must be deep in his thoughts. I'm not gonna. No, that's the moment you need the most text and hugs and stuff. And and I don't know the full context of what happened to you, so I cannot give you my opinion, even if I have a lot of opinions on everything. But the best <laughs> I can do is give you a big hug, you know. And and yeah, and you've been in this ecosystem for long. You know the ups and downs, which also in a weird way makes you super qualified to be in this position right now. So and your job was really really complicated the level of notoriety and hype and rich kickoff had it was either either you start with a bang and you create one of the most incredible legacy ever or people are gonna die quick and 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 you guys as well burn down so it's not like which in a in a weird way probably makes it easier to change things hard you know because that was that was eh, it failed makes me sad because i thought you guys was really really good but Everyone's learning from it, and your next adventure, you'll do things differently. Or maybe you stay there, I don't know. Of course, of course. You tell me, we'll see in three months. <laughs> I wonder uh, I wonder how things are going to be. No, I, I, I appreciate uh, your, your, your kind words, and uh, of course, yeah, there's just uh, many moving pieces, and we can only focus on what we are oh, in yeah. control of, and I'm, I'm, I'm at peace with, with everything that has gone down, and... I'm Oops. looking forward to to the next uh, chapters, and I'm looking I look forward for an next chapter. I, I I look forward to watching you guys. I look forward to to seeing your progression because uh, uh, even even last year, it's like last year you guys, you you guys are an inspiration yeah. for Europe. You know, you guys are an inspiration for Europe, and you guys are actively making uh, the the scene better. And I admire yeah. that a lot. 
and um, we still lost my fuckers <laughs> but uh, we're gonna redeem ourselves this time so we can really yeah that's good Nice. I'm going to order Burgermeister now. Thank you for it. <laughs> okay. Well, Roma, I wish you all the best. Whatever that watched, thank you very much as well. Uh, we're going oh, to good end evening, Monsieur. Uh, have all the best to you, brother. Okay. Take care of yourself. Cheers. Bye bye. <laughs> all right. I'm going to hang you up now, yeah? Oh, he hung up himself. Okay. Now I hung up. Okay. That's it. That's it, guys. Ah, the conversation with Romao is fantastic. Like he's he's a fucking he's a fucking legend, man. My first impression, you know, he annoyed the shit out of me with his fucking unicorn costumes, being a part of unicorns of love. I was like, what the fuck is this shit? You know, I was competing against this team. Fuck it out, but. Uh, now I, after getting to know him, you know, he has uh, such a good heart and does everything with such a clear purpose and uh, with um, such a passion for both his team and also for, of course, winning. And uh, I think that um, with people like this, they are very, very rare, but when you come across them, it's very obvious and you can have conversation with them for a very very long time and uh, I will upload this on YouTube of course if you missed it uh, I will end the stream there guys uh, tomorrow we continue with LPO I mentioned that I was sick this morning and uh, honestly my fiance cooked like I slept very long so I slept maybe like 13 14 hours I think my body really needed it I slept absurdly long and then when I woke up my fiance made this feta cheese paprika chicken dish with dill and it come after i ate it i felt like a new man i felt like a new man altogether and uh, my voice is still very raspy because i'm taking no sprays and painkillers but uh, i will uh, probably be good uh, to continue the course streams for tomorrow let me see what's on the schedule all right, so tomorrow we have T1 versus Nongshim. I think we start off there, and then Top Esports versus RNG. That's a, quite the banger right there. We have some good games tomorrow. See you guys tomorrow at, uh, at, uh, at 9 o'clock. 9 o'clock in the morning. All the best. KT versus Hanwha Life is also a fucking banger here. Yeah. T1 is just fun, fun to watch. KT versus Hanwha Life. When will the YouTube video be up? I just need to upload it, and then I need to maybe put some timestamps. And then we cook.